Hello everyone, good morning to you from Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, my name is Anu Ojo and I'm welcoming you all to day 6, which is the final day of the History Makers Training February 2019, themed how to plan, structure and achieve your life goals for the next 25 years. It has been a roller coaster journey for us um, here in Kiev, Ukraine. Um, if you've been with us for the past um, six days, I want to guess that you have had a similar experience. Uh, as you join us, I'd like to encourage you to please share, share, share. That is our mantra here because we want to get everybody, as many as possible, to partake in the feasting that we are having here in Kiev, Ukraine. So uh, for our Facebook friends, uh, you could share this video by clicking on the share icon right now as you're watching, and you could share it on your timeline. I also encourage people to write something, give a sentence, give a word, let your friends have an idea of what to expect by watching the video. And also, if you belong to groups, you could, you could share this video to the groups you belong. And there are some friends of yours on Facebook that would be glad and they would thank you if you share this message with them by sending it to their inboxes. All right, and so also for our, our YouTube viewers, you're very much welcome. We're pleased to have you. And you could also share this video by clicking on the link and sharing it on your social media platforms. Well, this is the six, the final day for the History Makers Training February 2019. Um, I have some books I would like to announce which um, are relevant to today's topic. And the first one is Olorunwa. Olorunwa. And that is a Yoruba name that means there is God. Well, this book talks about the journey and the life of Dr. Sunday Adelaja. It's a book that I would like to encourage you to please get. You could get it on Amazon, on Amazon Kindle Unlimited, or you could get you could buy it on Amazon or Kada Books, or you could write to our office here at DSAS Books at DSAS Books at gmail.com. The title of the book is Olorunwa, um, the portrait, a biography, a yeah. biography, yeah, a biography of Dr. Sunday Adelaja, the roads of life. All right. So I'll go to the next book, uh, which is another big book titled The Death of, Nat of Nations. The Death of Nations. Why Country Fail? Well, this book, which is part one, <laughs> because I remember Dr. Sunday mentioning that he has three parts to this book. And this is just part one of the book. <laughs> I can see how heavy it is <laughs> and how thick it is. Well. The book is titled The Death of Nations, Why Countries Fail. Well, if you want to understand why countries fail and why nations die, you want to lay your hands on this book. It, it mentioned a lot of things here that will be beneficial and ca that can help everyone to rebuild and to prevent failure in our nations, in our society, and in different spheres of um, of our of our being so please do well to get this book the title of the book once again is the death of nations why countries fail all right so thank you so much for those of you who are just joining good morning to you good afternoon good evening uh this is the sixth the final day for the history makers training and also a very important announcement as you can see on your screen is the latest release by dr sunday the title of the book is Kingdom First, Church Second. Kingdom First, Church Second. And interestingly, this book on the day of its release became a bestseller. It became a bestseller on the day of its release. Amazing, amazing feat. It means this is a very needful and needed topic for the body of Christ. So Kingdom First, Church second, and this book actually is on discount on a pre order price for just one week. You could get this book for about three dollars right now. So please go to Amazon and order for this book on Kindle for three dollars. The title of the book, once again, is Kingdom First, Church Second. Kingdom First, Church Second. All right, well, we're okay. So, um, I also like to give announcement ab about the next HMT that will be coming up on April. Uh, it, it will be coming up on the 8th to 12th of April. That is just for the HMT. But 
there would be the embassy of god 25th an anniversary so the 25th anniversary of the embassy of god church which would be on the 4th to the seventh, you are invited also for the anniversary. If you like to join or you like to partake in the anniversary and also in the um, next history makers training, please do well to go to Sunday at delajablog.com slash HMT. Sunday at delajablog.com slash HMT. You're going to see a form there where you could register for the next HMT and you can do that from now. And if you have any inquiries about um, the training about the anniversary, you can also write to us. We will be happy to hear from you. Please write to hmt at godembassy.org. I repeat, hmt at godembassy.org. You could write to us and we would have, we could give, we could have a correspondence about the History Makers training. And also, I would like to give announcement to those of you who would like to join Dr. Sunday's mentorship program. It's free, but it's actually worth $3,000 in a year. And Dr. Sunday Adelaja is giving that for free. So how can you join in the mentorship program? You just go to sundayadelajablog.com slash mentorship. sundayadelajablog.com slash mentorship for you to subscribe for the mentorship program. And also, some of you might be aware, or maybe some are not aware, that Dr. Sunday, he organizes and he has an ask program and ask dr sunday program and some of you might have questions for dr sunday and you can send in your questions and how can you do that by also going to the same blog sunday adelajablog.com but this time it's going to be slash ask sunday adelajablog.com slash ask well i'm not sure if you can remember all of my announcement <laughs> but i hope that you you got it so the most important one that I want you to please remember is for the next coming HMT. I don't want you to miss it. I'm sure many of you have been saying, I have to come, I have to register. Well, start planning for it. It is from the 8th to the 12th, from the 8th to the 12th of April, of April. So you could write, write to us at HMT at GodEmbassy.com or go right now to register at Sunday at DeLajablog.com slash HMT. Thank you so much. Please share, share, share. And at this point, we are ready here to get another dose uh, from Dr. Sunday Adelaja. As you can see, the title of today's theme is Your Day is the Picture of Your Whole Life. Well, I want to believe we are ready. Yeah. Are we ready? Yes. yes. All right. So if you're ready, get your pen there, get your notepad, and I introduce to you no other person. On Dr. Sunday Adelaja. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Dr. Anun. Thank you so much. And good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, 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 well. It's been fun here. We are in the middle of snow. Even though we are all brightly dressed like this, but we are in the midst of snow. We have a lot of snow here. Yesterday was like it was like we were back in this country of uh, uh, Santa Claus. <laughs> you know, it was uh, so snowy, white, the trees were white, everywhere was, uh, it was like we were in the folklore, storybook. And it's winter, it's snow, cold, but, you know, the kind of enjoyment we're having here, you will not get it in Hawaii. Oh, <laughs> we are warm in our hearts. We are we are hot. Oh, oh yeah, we are we are so warm by uh, our fellowship, by the revelation that God is sending down. You know, we are so hugely, hugely blessed. And if you have been following us, you you could probably just attest to that. Well, right? Oh, Kniga Oshla. Right now, I'm looking in my into the uh, into the book into the screen, and I'm seeing the latest book we just released. Ha! Ah, each time I look at that book, I'm saying, "How I wish they know what is in there." Hmm. In fact, I'm even I will even say more than that. How I wish the world would know the revolution that this book is going to cause. 
the changes it's going to bring and the correction of all the t evil and the errors that this book is going to bring about. Basically, the deliverance that this book is going to carry. Oh, I wish people know. So that's the book there. It's called Kingdom First, Church Second. And like you, you heard, the, set, the other book that is there is The Death of Nations. <laughs> why countries fail, why nations die. Um, when you read that book, you will see all the reasons why our nation and several other nations are in the dire state where they are. And um, then the third book that we are presenting today and we are using to teach this class is my biography. It's my story. So you see my journey. Uh, a lot of people um, see my results, the results that I have now, but they have not really uh, read the book. They've not been able to uh, know what makes the man tick. Well, the whole story is there in that book. It will really enlighten you and give you a little bit of uh, understanding about, you know, the life of the man. You see, people say that um, behind the people's stories are in, I mean, people's secrets are in their stories. So, yeah, so if you read the story, you get some secrets. Well, welcome everybody. How are you all doing today? Great, 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 great. So let's, uh, let's start today's teaching by just <clears throat> going back to, because today is the last day. So since today is the last day, I want to censor your feelings. I want to uh, hear from you, what are you experiencing? And being aware that this is all coming to an end, and you have to go back. Paul, why are you so emotional? Paul is already crying. Oh, <laughs> DC, I'm not crying. No, um, I'm actually, yeah, mixed, mixed feelings. Um, but but I'm very excited actually. I'm very excited because I feel like um, I've got. Um, it's like I've been given a path uh, that I can, I can, I can follow, um, and I'm excited because I've learned that uh, you know life is predictable, and so now I can see that my 25 years in 25 years I can achieve. Um, I can achieve greatness and i can i can achieve uh make impact um according to what i've learned here which is very very encouraging uh because obviously i've just been going through life doing what i thought was serving god and really oh my god my oh. impact has been minimal um you know and I've, my impact Should we has call the book guidelines to life or what mm. A guideline because it's like we are all coming to this world and nobody gives us a guideline is it a guide is it a guideline roadmap to life right that's a good one roadmap to life and it's well said that i've just been living the way i think so everybody is living the way he thinks is best for yes. him yeah. But no real roadmap to life. Yes, yes, mm. and no, and no real impact on my community. No sense of uh, responsibility for the problems in my society, in my community. It's been more just church-centered, uh, very inward in church. Everything is is about church and it's about activities in church um, and serving in church. But now I, I've actually realized that I can. Uh, make an impact in my community if I take responsibility for uh, some of the problems in my community. And there is a strategy, you know, 
that's even more exciting. There is a strategy. There is a way that you can achieve success if you know it. So, yeah, so the light bulb moment. Yes, I've had uh, some few light bulb moments, actually. Um, so things to think about. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So when, when you go back, when do you go back tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow. So when you go back tomorrow, you know, you've, you have a challenge in your hand because then you've got to find time to really sit down with all the materials. And... Absolutely. I mean, it has to start from uh, my global uh, 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 purpose. purpose. It, it, ha it has to start from that, and I can't move on until I, I, have, um, I have firmed that up through uh, spending uh, time with the teachings. I've got, I've got the books, um, the YouTube uh, um, series, Solitude. I cannot move an inch until I have got that global life plan because then I can put the general plan and the long term and the short term plan. Then I know that I'm on my way to achieving success. Without that, I'm just going to go back and kind of settle into my Routine, my life yeah, and yeah. my ambitions. Let's yeah. put it that way. And my ambitions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Alan, huh? yeah, sure. yeah. First of all, actually, I got delivered last night. Oh, wow. So, Hallelujah. 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 What's happening? Oh no, sorry, I was just talking. I think there was talking okay. um, You got delivered last night? Yeah. Hmm. From what? From, from my demons. From the things that From the doing. things that have been the pushing have been you. Talking, yeah, but how did you feel it? Oh, I, I felt that's what I said. That's, I feel like I'm at peace now. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Because some people, some people will think, and it's very important that uh, Alan said that, because some people will think that we are just being secular here. Mm -hmm. Because we are not praying, we are not fasting, we are not singing, we are not doing the African jump and dance and <laughs> drumming and things like that. But the atmosphere itself, the word we are speaking, we are speaking the mind of God. We are bringing the will of God to the earth. As it is in heaven, we are carrying, we are imposing the kingdom, and the kingdom touches people. Do you know? Have you have been listening to those testimonies in our church of all the people getting delivered? Why do you think so much deliverance? Just kingdom. When you reveal the kingdom to them, all the demons leave. Without all the deliverance services, people falling down, people doing that, screaming, praising, doing all. Just truth. You shall know the truth. You just need to sit down. I tell people, just need to sit down. You don't need to be a believer. I say, you, if you don't believe in God, just find me. <laughs> just find me. God will appear to you. Just sit down there, be with your own belief, with your atheism. Just sit down there. The word will pass and penetrate through your bones and marrow and restore everything that has been messed up. <laughs> oh, have I prayed for deliverance or for healing this time? Just carrying God. Because I have come to you. If I do this by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come to you. The kingdom of God comes when we show up. So that's a strong testimony. And if, if he had not said it, we wouldn't know. But it would have still it has it's happened anyway. Only we didn't get to know to get encouragement. And for any other person that might be struggling to know that I'm here, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I, I just feel like closer, closer. Yeah, sorry. I just feel like I've got, I, I feel more relaxed than myself. I feel I've got like freedom now, where I just felt like it's like the shackles were holding me back. And probably when I first came here, you probably felt there was quite a bit of tension <laughs> from me. Yeah. Um, where now I feel like I can, I can go back. I've got, I've got a better idea of what I want to do, what I can offer, what attributes I've got. So it's like having a confidence in myself. Um, that, that I can share with other people. Beautiful, so, okay. beautiful. 
you know, I, you, you know, Alan, you are English, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you are English from England, and if for a lot of people who are coming from England, you know, especially if you are African, uh, a lot of people, you will notice a lot of people are just like Alan in England. They, I'm talking of British people. You know, because the religion that is there doesn't present God. Just religion, the Anglican Church. So because of that, people have just they are left on their own. They are left to themselves. And when you are left to yourself, without an anchor, without relationship with the Father, you don't know how to do it. You just live your own life. You just walk, and that is when you just you Satan will just have a play. He will going to have a day messing you up. But then the problem we have. We Africans that God has brought to Europe, who, who you know, we try, we believe God. We know that God could do all these things. God could fix the country. God could fix the people, but we just don't have the message. We don't have the method. We we need a lot of. We need to believe that God wants to use us, not just for ourselves, but for Europe and for Europeans. And I can't believe that. Our people are living among the British people, and we don't even bring them. To, we don't even bring. We don't even do too much to help them out, and that is heartbroken. And I want you to, to see the example of Allen, and thank God that Pastor, Pastor Chris brought him, and uh, you know they came and uh, I, Ian, and but that should just be a template for people who are living in all different countries in Europe. To see that if we if we could come if we be, if we could become God carriers ourselves, and if we could come with the message to these people, just the same stories you are hearing from Ukraine is going to be produced like this every day, in Italy, in Germany, in Europe. Look, you see, Pastor Natasha, she doesn't even speak German, but Germans are all, Germans are all over her. She's past, past 20, started twenty something churches over there. Or 30 something churches, one woman does, who doesn't even speak German. <clears throat> but because she has the message and she has the confidence, she has the confidence, she's a kingdom carrier because of what she knows. 70 year old woman <laughs> bringing deliverance everywhere because of what she knows. If we could get ourselves equipped properly, we could set the whole of Europe free and set it on fire, just like Europe delivered Africa, we could re return, return the, 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 what, the gesture by also bringing deliverance to, to the people. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy for Ireland because now he's going to help a lot of people by God's mm -hmm. grace. He's going to help a lot of his countrymen. Mm -hmm. And he's going to let them know that God is real. God is for real. Mm -hmm. And not just for real, he can really help. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to Portugal, and see what the English people do when they go on vacation, you will see hopeless people that find help only in fun. And just fun, just chilling, just fun. And they've, they've lost it. So, but they don't know it's Satan that is having a heyday on them. Or if you go to the stadium, the same thing. Or if you go to the pubs, and it's all over because people don't just have what to live for. When you don't have, when you don't live for something greater than yourself, mm -hmm. you live for yourself. And when you live for yourself, you shoot yourself in, the, in your feet. You crush yourself. And life, you want to enjoy, begin to be the thing that is destroying you. So uh, that testimony from Alan today. Glory to God. <laughs> And thank you for sharing. That's the key. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for telling us. All right. Since you ask what I feel. Yeah, feeling. Yeah. What I'm feeling. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I share with you earlier about that experience I have when I get birth to my child. Yeah. And this, uh, when I, when I, when I uh, see that. Everything was finished. God was given everything. And I have the same feeling now because I feel I have been pregnant, pregnant, pregnant in 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 I don't know many years. 
I never get bored to it. I, do, I feel all inside. Oh. I know I have. The child has come. Wow. So you had you had the, the logic. It's like I felt I've been pregnant all this while, all this my life, yeah. but the child was not coming. Mm. Can you see the burden mm. and the heaviness mm. and the frustration mm. that you've been pregnant mm. and the child could you couldn't just release it? Mm. But this what she's feeling is the child has come. Ah! The child has come out. The child has come out. Is that what you feel? And the child is finished. And Everything is done. Is done. <laughs> I should not just nurse it and comfort it and wow. work with it. And, but it's finished. Wow. Same with our destiny. You yes. Know? yes. So while well, God is... And my, if you, you've not been to Africa church, if you go to African church, you will see people still praying and begging that God do something. Mm -hmm. They don't know it's finished. Mm -hmm. you, you, so, you, you see what Jesus said? It is finished. Mm -hmm. Just like with the child, the nails are there, the fingers are there, the ear is there, the legs are there, the ears are there, everything is there. Mm -hmm. Just feed it. Just You don't need to do anything. Just nourish it and he grows and becomes a pa papa one day or a mama one day. <laughs> but God is finished. Look at that illustration. Powerful. But church and religion teaches you as if you need to break it through. You need to plant some seed. I mean, or what? Play, pay some money or you know, go to church every day or sacrifice or beg man of God to lay hands on you. <laughs> but God has done it. That is a powerful illustration. And you remember I told you in the beginning when God created man, he said he blessed them and said be fruitful and multiply. So that is give them the power. He's already given everything. He put in them the power to be fruitful, to multiply, to increase, to have dominion, to subdue. It is finished even before we were born. But we look after these things as if Nothing is done. We make God look wicked. As if God is not done anything. But this example is whew. Mm. The child is born. Mm. And everything is there. Yes. <laughs> so I'm so happy. I'm so thankful. Glory to God. <laughs> wow. So, but give her back. Mm. <laughs> I know the answer to this question, but I'm still going to ask because I don't know the way you are going to say it. Do you, are you being grateful to God that you took the decision to come to I this I am program? so grateful. I know that this will be my uh, solution. I know it. Inside? Inside, yes. When you were back home? Yes. You felt it? Yes. I have to do it. Wow. I think because I know that was my solution. Wow. You just felt it inside. Yes. I didn't know exactly what I go uh, would go through because I'm an older woman, and I see, look at uh, the YouTube. I see a bunch of you are younger, younger and the uh, the tempo and yeah, I this, think this could I follow food? it? Oh yes, I have followed it. Yes, I'm, yeah. I, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> For the next 25 years, get ready. <laughs> Woo, wow. You see, sometimes one decision in your life, one decision can change everything. Your decision to come settles it. Mm. So Glory to God. Mm. Thank you. I feel I'm drowning Saba. I visit Kong Salmon. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I feel I'm Queen Saba. That we Queen sit Sheba. Queen Sheba. That we sit Kong Salmon. Going to see Saba. And we have no home. Ah. <laughs> all the wisdom. Yeah. <laughs>
Queen Shiva. <laughs> Going to see Solomon. <laughs> wow! <laughs> All the wisdom, yeah. But the whole of Europe is hungry like that. So we just heard from Norway. Before then, we heard from England. All our continents are. And my African people who know a bit of this truth, Christ. They're just doing their own religious thing, their own churches. They are not even reaching out to the indigenous. Maybe they don't know where. Well. So, um, and this is a confirmation to us that the world is hungry for the, for the truth and for deliverance and for God's blessings. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other person want to say anything? Yes. Yes, please. Nani. All right. Well, um, I'm so overwhelmed and uh, I can't really express uh, my feelings. It, when I made the decision to come to Ukraine, even though I've not uh, followed the essay for long, maybe barely two months plus. Yeah. Well, the day I made this decision, um, I was so excited in, in me, in your heart, in my heart. Mm. But later, I said, "Does it really worth it? Mm. Should yeah, I really go?" Because you got to pay the ticket, the money, the yes. everything. Yes, mm. I said the year is just beginning. Do you really have? Uh, well, you've been delivered from first fruits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I told my husband, I said, "There's something that is." I, I have to pushing go. me. It's pushing me because I have I've been I had so many questions I've asked that I haven't had answers to for so long. And uh, like my foundation from the high school, the the anthem of my school then was knowledge is light as ignorance is darkness. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, so and I've been asking so many questions and my coming here now. I realize that the ignorance that is darkness is not only darkness, but is deliverance for me. The light. The light. The light is deliverance. Because when we were sharing in our group, I was just uh, telling Dr. I know that when I first came, after listening to some of the messages, life is predictable, all those, I just felt that I've been a strip of uh, my potentials, and I was like a naked woman. And it's religion that has done that. Yes. So, everything I've heard, when I came here, I said, mm, I don't even know my purpose. But even with what I've heard so far, I know where I can even start from right now. Wow, amazing. Yes. I know where I can start Even from. before you go to do the solitude and the yes. book. And because when I left here last night, before I even took my shower and everything, all I was, I was just singing praises. I was singing to God. I, I will have this, this freedom in my heart. I said, God, you are so simple. And I, and I came to you as if you are a difficult father. Ooh. I've served you for over 20 years thinking I was serving him. As if he's a, a God that cannot be touched, a God that cannot be reached. And it's just by me all the time. I was, Jesus! I, I said, Jesus! I said, Father, I, I'm, so, I'm so grateful that you are, you are my source that I never knew. You are the source that I think with my power, with my prayers, with my everything, that's the only way I can get to you. Not knowing that he's just there. He says, seek me. I never seek the way he wanted me to seek him. So for me, this is deliverance for me. I've all, all my life, God brought me from a village that is so, so, so dark, so poor that anytime I look back, I say, God, why did I even come from this kind of place? I ask that question that there must be a reason why you brought me from this place. You will become the light. Now I see why God brought me from that place. You will become the deliverer. I see that I have so much work to even do. Which I will start immediately. I even leave. this year I have to go to Nigeria. No matter. Jesus. What.
I have so much wealth inside of me that I never use in my life. I have so much, oh, so much resources God placed inside of me. So much precious that I was letting to waste. Father Lord, Jesus! I thank God. I thank God. I oh, wow. Jesus. And you've been how many years in the Lord? Over 20 years in the Lord. So. And God has been waiting that 20 years. You could have been doing all this since 20 years ago. You could have been bringing this light and deliverance to your community and to your people for the past 20 years now. That land where you were born has been waiting 20 years for this. God has been waiting 20 years for this. For you to have had this light and begin to shine that light in that community. <sighs> but religion, bad thing. And you will think you are okay with religion. But I'm here, go ahead and express yourself. You know, the question I ask is your feelings. And I was purposeful about that. What you are experiencing right now? What is going on in your emotions, in your mind? So I see because me, one gift, one thing I have is that I always dream and I always, God showed me a lot of things. And anytime I see my dream, I see myself back in that village and it's always dark. But the interpretation I have based on the knowledge I have is because demons. God is not there. The mm. witches and wizards, demons are there. So and uh, you are always backward and i say ah so the strive to even move all i think is these enemies are the ones that are putting me backwards mm. but this is, revelation that has come that it is darkness uh, it is ignorance that is that that is darkness demons forget about them say i wrote a book what is the book i wrote is it mountain of ignorance Mountain of Ignorance, and in the subtitle to that book, I said, the greatest problem in the world is not sin. Because sin has been overcome at the cross. The greatest problem in the world is not Satan, because Satan has been defeated. But we are still battling with those two things that are not even an issue anymore. We are still being told, even in church, that it is sin that has been cancelled. So we are battling with something that is already past, you know, past, past tense. And we are still being told that it's Satan. So we are still battling with Satan. Whereas it's not even, it's, it's not essential. But the only thing we need to battle with and which is the greatest problem of humanity is ignorance. So when you see that darkness in that village and you go and be fighting Satan, Satan is having a heyday. He's rejoicing. It's light they needed. And that's what you are getting this way. So please go ahead and talk. So I say that well, I'm supposed to be the light, no matter what, no matter how much. But I Jesus had it. said that, mm -hmm. and Jesus meant business when he said, "When I was in the world, he said, when I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm going, you are the light of the world." He meant business. That is serious. He didn't say you are the, the you are the deliverance, you are the demon caster. No, no. Light. <laughs> Light of the world. That will take care of all the rest of the things. So I know I have a burden in my heart now to start something no matter what, to touch lives. At least let me let, let me do something that uh, I should be able to put leave a legacy behind for those mm. who come for my funeral. Mm. 
Lady be that when I've gone, there are lives that we come to say, Ediri touched us. This is this is what that is my own mission right now. And I thank God uh, the, the, the the importance of the solitude and what and what to go into it. That is my first point of contact. And, and now I'm hungry to even go and read more of the books to get myself ready knowledge yes when i get that knowledge i know one of my gifts i can impart it to as many people, people that I as possible it to. Mm. so it's for me to go and equip myself and yes i just want to thank you for this great opportunity you've given to some of us and a lot of people are out there who are wallowing in darkness not knowing that there's an opportunity like this that god has given to us. But you just saw me two months ago. How did you? How? How? Yeah. Did, did God just set you up, or you just orchestrated that? I believe God set me up because I have been asking questions. I've been asking Him in my own closet that if you are indeed answering prayer, God that answers prayer. What What has been going on? Are you been praying for these twenty something years? Yeah. I said. So when am I going to live my life? What am I going to leave behind? I always ask that question. Am I going to continue with just this work, work? Not that I don't have ideas in my, 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 my head, but this Uncle limitation. Sam, Uncle Sam will not yeah. allow. Hmm. This limitation of how do you break away? <sighs> and a very close friend of uh, mine around me, even in church, I tell them that I've been feeling so flat. I've been feeling so unfulfilled. But I don't know what is, what is going on. So it was at my point of as asking these questions, a friend mentioned your name. Okay. Not that the friend is following you. Wow. He said he heard the name from somebody. No. Yes. I can't believe it. <laughs> and when he said it, it has to do with uh, you, you have a lot of messages that has to do how you can uh, connect to God. I said, what I need is connecting to God. Mm. So I just went to YouTube, type Sonia Dilaja. And I, I think there was a broadcast where somebody was doing a book review or something. I said, what is this? Is this real? I started following. Ah, my mindset started changing. I said, God, what is, is this real? But the thing is that this, what this man is saying to me made a lot of sense. Even if I don't follow him, but what he's saying, I think I'll benefit from it. So that was how I got caught. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. So I believe it's 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 mm. my time that it's at the pointed yes, time that God yes, yes. wants to prove to me that you have a mission which you have not you have not fulfilled and you have to start. Mm. So and I thank God because I, now that I came, I'm more happy in my heart because I know God will be happy with me that I found that path. And no matter how many years I have to live. I have to do something. You know, let me ask you another question. You said some of your kids had grown up. Oh, yeah. One yeah. is 20, 21. 21, yeah. What are your honest wishes about that one that is 21? Oh. Oh, your kids. I have a message inside of me now. My, the moment we, where we talked yesterday about those, uh, where you were talking about the resources that is inside of us, I see resources in my children which I didn't know that they can be used even right now. Even now when I go back, my teaching for them is they can begin to invent stuff. I'll give them the principles of life, of what I've... I'll make them to realize that life, their life is predictable. They don't have to wait. And they can, I have Ooh. a lot to teach, not only my children. Do you know I have a book about invention as well? It's, it's called uh, How to Raise Up the Next Generation of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. It should be here somewhere. Okay. So if you want to encourage them to invent, let them read. It, they, they should not rush it. They might find it a bit challenging at first. And I have videos also how to become an inventor. So if you go to YouTube, you could also find that. So I have, I, have, I have enough knowledge to... So you are seeing the picture of what your children... Yes. Yes. They're not going to go through this rat race. And even the ones that are out there, not even just my children. My heart right now is not just for my children alone. 
my heart now is to reach out to as many, especially the kids who are coming up. You know, in the US, the children are, the, the, the technology, the game has it's taking them taken over. their mind that they don't even have no critical, they don't even think, they don't even know what they're going to do. So a lot, vast majority of them, once I equip myself, I'm ready for them to, at least the ones I can reach. Beautiful. Yes, thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, Grace. I know that person want to say anything. Okay, let's go to the class. Yeah, nobody is speaking. So, okay, today's subject is going to be your day. One day, your day is the picture of your whole life. Your day, your one day is the picture of your whole life. I want to first of all ask you all how you understand that, that, uh, that title. What do, you, what do you think this one is saying? What do you think this is referring to? How do you understand this? Anybody wants to try? Okay, Poro wants to try. Um, so the, the, the way I understand that is that the, um, the activities of, of our day, um, uh, our plans for the day and the activities um, will lead uh, to um, our future uh, life, if you like. So if I, I mean, from what we have been, we have been taught, we know that we ha you have a goal and then you have a plan and then you have activities that that lead you towards that goal. Uh, so, so vice versa. If you don't have any goals, then your activities, your daily activities, will not lead you towards any goal. So, whatever we are doing every day, uh, basically, is 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 what is leading to our future. Basically, uh, I think that's how I understand it. What about if you just live it like uh, Idiri says and like you said? Just living my life, trying to do it the way, the best I understand, but you are not really having any goal or mission. Or exactly, that's so why. your life? Exactly, that's why uh, my life is mediocre <laughs> because <laughs> because not, I haven't. Not had you in particular, no, but everybody. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just using my my myself as an example. Yes, I've had I've achieved some things uh, in my life in terms of education and things like that. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, because those are the things that I planned. My ego centric. Plan Plans, you know my ambitions but uh, I, ha I never set goals uh, 25 years ago that I wanted to make an impact um, you know on my generation and so therefore I have not I have not put activities uh, plans mm -hmm. in place so therefore I have not achieved those things you know so yeah yeah but how many people do we know that just that are just living normal life, just just going to work, just coming back. Just. The majority of us, uh, the majority of us, really. I, I don't think. I I suppose we are maybe in a daze. Maybe you know we live life like um. Like we are sleeping. Yes, like, like in a daze. Like we just get up. Oh, I've got to go to work. And we don't think there's any alternative. Sometimes we we don't believe there's an alternative. We get caught up in the bills in the rat race, in the issues of life. Um, and that becomes our focus. We don't think about a higher calling, living for others. I mean, those are not things that we hear often. So therefore, our minds, you know, our, our minds are not tuned to those things. You know, so like when you talk about the, 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 the drug addicts and the alcoholics who've come to the center for six months, their, their minds are renewed, renewed. for six months, renewed. every day, yeah. every week, you know, so it actually becomes part of them. Yeah. So of course you would put activities in place. This, like, this is your goal. So yeah. you will, every day you put activities in place to mm. achieve those goals. Mm. But when you are caught in the, the hustle and bustle of life, even if you are a Christian, you're still going through the same motion. Hmm. And then church activities, well, that is even going to take a lot of your time. So you're not even thinking. 
I actually had to take time out because I realized that I was I couldn't actually think in the midst of all the activities that I was doing. I couldn't think about my life. I couldn't think about my future. You know. So we are kind of uh, stuck. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. You got it just right. Anybody wants to? Um, I, uh, before talking about what I think about the topic, mm -hmm. uh, I was just thinking in my heart that if anyone is a truth seeker, God will definitely make sure they, you know, they find this type of message, a message that transformed, that can mm. change your life that can make you move from um, you know a, a state of mediocre to uh, you know a, a person with a future yes so this this kind of message can change anyone as long as you are looking for the truth mm -hmm. anyone that will condemn this type of message with it to my own heart i think that person doesn't like the truth mm -hmm. and that person will will you know wallow in darkness so my own feeling is that i am so grateful that i you know god loved me so much and made me to to see this type of um, message and I, I just want to say that my life has been transformed definitely from where i know myself to now so i'm just so grateful to God for his love over my life. Amen. So, and this topic is telling us that what you do daily is what you become eventually. Beautiful. That's well said. Sunset. Yes. Hmm. So, we, we should try to live a better life, a life with purpose so that we can achieve our goal. So, if what I do daily is that I go to work, I come back home, feed my family, go to, uh, go to the kitchen, cook, feed my family, put them to bed to sleep, go to work the next day, feed my family again, and I put them to sleep, go to work again. And that's just what most people do. So what then will you say, because what you say what you do daily, it's what your life will become. So what would life become in that sense? Yeah, actually, actually, um, that's a kind of life that I used to live before. And the thing that we just add to that is rest, you know, just sleep, you know, thinking I'm having fun. But any, if one should live that kind of life, that's a mediocre uh, kind of life, and you will never achieve anything. There's no, there's no results. If you don't, um, you know, do anything. So, if you live a purposeful life, a life that is, you know, um, that is praising God, because we praise God in the way when we affect life, people's, people's lives. Life. Yeah. So, if you live that kind of life, you you you're going to see results. The result that we affect. So you should live for that purpose. You should. One has to then live for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a vision, a purpose of what you want to do with your life. Yes. And be carrying that out. That is when you will get there. Yeah. And that will become your reality. Your life will become life of impact. Mm -hmm. But most people dress their kids, send them to school. Okay, maybe they go out to the restaurant, to the cafe, to the, uh, to the pub. Sometimes, then maybe they go and do a party, relatives party, Owambe, throw a party, dress well, dress well. Drink, dance, dance. A lot of people like to dance, music. Then go back home again and sleep. Wait for another weekend, go and dance and dress and laugh. <laughs> so 10 years passes, 20 years passes, you just don't like living. That's what people call life. Hmm. So what comes out? 
Mediocre. Yeah, that's what comes out. And, um, you know, there's a, a, an example that I just want to say. When I used to live that kind of life, I was only particular about my children, my family, people that I know. And I see people that are in the image of God, and I just pass them by. You because, didn't notice. Mm, no, didn't really pay attention because I just feel sorry for them and I say, oh, I wish God would just do something. But now that I've known uh, some things after meeting um, Pastor Sunday, I can think. Now, I think when I see situation like that, I, I think, what can I do? What is my own? Make a difference. Uh, to make a difference. And I have a, an example that always gives me joy. You know, there is a child, this particular one, that I found under the bridge. Under the bridge? Yes. There were so many there, but this particular one was coming after me and I took attention. Now, you know, bringing him out of that place, putting him in a, in a home, and sending him to school. So when I see, hmm. anytime it comes to my mind, how the boy was, and the, and I, you, know, you can't imagine, I had to go to Nigeria to see him, just because of him. He was so that tense. I, I went, I traveled home to go and see this boy. And then they went, during this last December, I called him because he always say, I want to see mommy. Can I talk to mommy? And I became a mommy to him. Somebody that was just living under, you know, the, bridge. under the bridge. And there were, there were so many there. And I called him this December. I said, what do you want for Christmas? My God. He said, mommy, I just want to see you. Wow. Somebody, Are you serious? Yes. No parents, nothing. He doesn't know where he came from. No. So this is what knowing the truth can do for you. You will change people's life. And now he speaks English. He calls me, Mommy, I'm, I'm reading my books. It's unbelievable. So I can transform someone's life. So Jesus! This is what we can do with this truth if you don't want to if you don't like pastor sunday don't you don't have to like him just take the message and run with it you know are there anyone to say something no no i'm right now okay okay you may not like his face but you can't that's a summary the truth you just keep <laughs> <laughs> That's where I want to summarize it. That. You may not like his face, but he can't be ignored. Mm. It's just not possible. <laughs> For me, everything that everybody said is just in what mommy uh, uh, Lodger just said. That if you indeed you are thirsty and you are hungry, you are searching, God really, really knows how to bring you. And that is my testimony. Mm. You know, from all my sojourn, from here to here to from different denomination still where i am now i just saw that how many how many churches have you passed through mm. <laughs> let, let them start counting <laughs> i started from you don't deeper, want to count life let's count life. deeper life i went to glory time bible church glory glory time bible church in abe okuta glory, glory time bible glory. church who is he yeah who is the, the pastor through their church i met you Billy don't know larry adiboy pastor larry adiboy and I they are one know. of the few people that Teach the word okay. then in okay. uh, in Abekuta then from. So, but they're still there. Yes, okay. but it's now with Billy Akoni. He closed the church down. Oh, yeah. He has a good heart, though. And it was he had the boy that commissioned this ministry. And he closed it down. And, and he said, from the biblical perspective of running ministry, just like what we mentioned here, that he saw that Apostle Paul planted each of those churches. There is nothing like one center bringing money to the center, one branch bringing that it is not. So each yeah. of the branches that he had then. He named them as an individual and he left it for everybody wow. and he closed down the central and he went to Boko and he started with his life wow. with his family here. Yeah. So, so and when that church finished, that was why I felt that ah, yeah, the boy came 
because I was there, like 94, 95, in Abekuta. The day the service was, the church was dissolved, yeah, the boy came. Wow. Yeah, so, so they knew this thing too. He said he was convinced, and when the church stopped, I got in touch with Pastor Bakari, Tunde Bakari. He came to Abekuta for, to a church, a Victory Life Bible Church. And when I had Victoria the truth, Bible, Victoria? Victory Life Bible Church. Victory Life. Mm -hmm. But that church today is something else. Who is the... Uh, During those demon purchasing my last show. <laughs> in future Who is the pastor? Lawrence, Lawrence Achidume. <laughs> but I just know that God has been faithful. So you, know, you started going to... Uh, the Bakari. desire to listen to the word of God pushed me to... Bakari. When I saw that Bakari came, because we watched Moments of Truth. So from there, I went to that... Uh, to lead. So when I went, okay. you know, to the Victory Life, I actually just came for a weekend program. So from that time, I said, anytime I have opportunity to go to Lagos, I will attend Lazarus. Eventually, I went for school, so I, I stopped going to Victory Life. It was like God just used the school to so escort me away from. So I in school, we continue with ESCO, mm, all this, you know, you serve God, serve God, serve God. <laughs> you are not reading. <laughs> you carry all these exercises and. But then, we were just in that mode. You just want your life to count. You want to do something for God. But that is the limit you know. That's the extent you know. So, so when I got to Lagos, I went to the great, uh, Lateran Assembly. So Before was, you left Nigeria? Yes. That was the church. I and in, in America, in, where did you go? I, I just, because when you first come, I you don't know anybody. You just want to. So I joined um, Jesus House Baltimore. And it has redeemed. Yes. Okay. And then when I watched your video that you had with all the pastors, I said that some of the top, top people that are even in North America, they are still the people there, so I know they have had you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just thought, um, I'm just, you know, I'm not too there, but I told some of the plan, I wrote them, I'm still going to discuss with you and ask some of, because I heard you mention that you have youth that goes to programs, and they invite them and they organize seminars and stuff like that for so i was like in a new environment how can i begin to do something mm -hmm. that looks like that so i still hope to get more light on how to bring them back home so that was why i believe that you know i was saying that you are just in the it's like you have just surrounding a mountain in a circle and you don't know what next to do that was the story for me so and that is why Meeting the SA has <sighs> opened me up to the, to the next level. Because I remember when you mentioned Caleb, I, I just flashed back. When I was 40, I told God that I'm 40. The next level of my life, that my life is just like a Caleb. At 40, was asking for a mountain. So I was like, God, after these 40 years of mine now, what is the next thing that I slept? And that was the year I traveled out. And just a year, thank God that I'm meeting you to know that <clears throat> there's more to life. Mm. It's just beginning. We've been existing, but now we want to start living. Mm. Is this? Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay. So the topic, again, like I said, is your day is the picture of your life the way you live one day at a time that is your life so let's assume that in a day you don't produce any product visible product you don't add value to yourself to others and you don't create product that's your life. So your life will be equal to emptiness, non-entity. But let's now say, every day of your life you are busy, full of activities, but really you can't define them. You can't see the end result. So what is your life? Your life then is vanity. Activities, but no measurement. 
So let's now say your life is I married, I have children, I have my kids. I'm dreaming of getting a bigger house. I have some cars, I change cars every day, every year. I get, I want, I have a good house, I get a bigger house. I want to be more comfortable, work more, work harder, get more income, create more uh, comfort conditions for my family. So that's your life. So what is your life then? Nothing. House is your life. Car is your life. Family? Well, you just need a few more years to discover that those children, they will soon leave home. And when they are gone, they will just become like you now too. You don't live with your parents and you are not sitting down with your parents and saying, oh, you invested in me, dad and mom, let me be here all my life to be grateful to you. You don't even remember them. You just remember them when they call or you call. You, you are too busy with your own life. <laughs> to survive, so does it make sense? You didn't do anything. So it means all those 30 years we are living for my ch for children, for others, it's, it's not an entity, it's nothing. They are alive, your children are alive, but where are they? <laughs> they are living their lives. Because you are sent here for something bigger, for something more essential. So, but whatever you are dreaming of doing in the future, even if you want to have a goal, a purpose, that purpose must be reduced to a concrete step daily or a few concrete actions that you take daily that will eventually lead to that vision that you have so if you have that vision and you don't have concrete daily actions that make you to touch that goal or that eventually leads you you remember we had a picture the other day a man that had stones stones and is placing it climbing so every day you must have something to climb that is leading you to climb the next one that is so if you don't have that daily, you will never get to the top because you don't have anything to take. You don't have a bridge. So, um, so you could dream anything you want. You could plan anything you want, but if you don't reduce it to daily actions that you take that are connected to that eventual vision that you, you're dreaming of, it's called dreamer. You are living in a dreamer's world. So whatever you are dreaming about must be cut down like that elephant so that every day you have connection with the elephant. You are eating a piece of it. Then the elephant will be eating up when you get to the top. So what you do every day, even if you are working for Uncle Sam 16 hours, make sure that at least you have one time, one minute or one hour or one five minutes to do something that is connected to your purpose. Even if it's going to be a phone call, even if it's going to be studying, even if it's going to be listening, even if it's going to be uh, planning, even if it's going to be, you have some actions every day that are bringing you closer, closer, closer to where you're meant to be. So, uh, No matter how you are busy, create time for your life. And what, when I say your life is your purpose, your destiny, what you are created for. Your life mission, your life values, your global purpose, your general plans, your long-term plans. At least two to three, two to four actions that you could do on a daily basis that you know are in line with where you're going. So that way, those actions now 
even though you have a lot of emptiness also, and you have a lot of vanity, Uncle Sam, mediocre, but the meaning, those two or three actions will bring the meaning to your life. And when all the, when all the emptiness are gone, when everything is burnt out, there will still be some substance left, which you know that that is your life now. So your day is the picture of your life. So in my case, for example, I know I need to raise leaders. I, these are the actions that will bring leaders. So it means my life is producing leaders. Then I have actions that are supposed to bring masses, influence people. So this action, I also take it daily. So in my, my life is also influence on people. Then I have books, things that I do with books. So my life is also, are also the books that I release. Then I do live broadcasts. So my life are also the people I affect with live broadcasts and things that I do. So those four actions, they are my life because I do them con continuously. Even though I might have been doing other things, maybe sleeping or something, they don't count, but I do think that count as well. Then I study, I build value, I build substance, I know more, so that I'm equipped to be able to add value, to be able to create things. So your day is important. Now I can talk about this topic because I, you know what that, you know, you understand it better now because, but we don't start with the day, you know. So what you are taught in the motivational speakers about motivational speakers is that plan your day. But it's not about planning the day. It's not about organizing the day. This is much more deeper than that. This is a bit different. You have to start from purpose, from the future. Because when we say your whole life, that is the future. But that future is made up of pieces. You first of all see it over there, 25 years forward. Then you come back here, you bring it down from there, you walk from there to here. And then you begin to walk from here back there. That's what, what we call your life. So, I think we, have a, we need a book on this one too. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Can we go on now? How old are you? What is the result of those days that you have already lived through? So this is a question to all of you. And what I mean is this is a question I ask my members sometimes. I bring them out and I say, how old are you? Some people will say 40. And I say, where is that 40? Where is it? Because they didn't realize that just by running everywhere, going to work, going to do this, going to marry, going to have children, they, they think that those activities means they are living. So at the end of the day, when I now then ask, show me the result. Where is those 40? That 40. You are 40 years old. Where is the 40 years? He said, gone. Or I don't know. I have children. as a notion. No, if you mention children, then I will tell you the dogs. Bring me the dog, that dog there. That's more children that you don't stop be mentioning those things to me. But those are a yeah, result of fees, those are the, the result of biology. Those are the result of instincts. No, I mean, you, I'm talking of 40 years. Your life, where is it? I didn't ask for the sperm where I went to. I didn't ask for the embryo, then you could show me children. But I'm saying life, the whole life, where is it? Your whole life, 40 years, where is it? Well, I went to school, but where is it? It's gone with the winds.
Yeah, in our society, uh, when you say, so where's the 40 years? In, the, in our culture is, is in the children. So we work hard to train them. And that's why in African culture, you look down on people that don't have children because you believe that they don't, they haven't lived, they haven't done anything for God because God says, multiply. So the more children you can have, in the, to the African mentality, then <coughs> that's the achievement. They've had children who will take on posterity and have children and have children. So when you come to the West and the people are saying, I don't want to have children because I, I just don't want to have children. You look like at them as if they're failures. So they are pursuing a bigger goal. They're delivering people and all. You're thinking, mm, if you don't have children, you don't have anything. Now I understand better. Yeah. So let me tell you, it's not just about children, but whenever you live just for yourself, for truth, for your me, I, John, my wife Mary, my children, <laughs> Mercy and uh, whatever, my children, whenever you do that, whenever you live for yourself, either it's for children or for your business or for your uh, ambition, anything you do just for yourself is a waste, mm. including children. So to live for children is to reduce your life to measuring your life by biology, by instinct. Okay, what do you need to do to have children? You need to mate. Did you think in the process? Did you create in the process? You didn't. You only engage yourself in biological exercise that doesn't require any of your investment or any of your thinking capacity or any work it's just mating do you know uh they are uh, uh, what they call them they breed animals now for example i've seen a, goril a gorilla and zebra mating you know they just run into each other choo -choo 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 -choo. And they give back to some children that are a combination of zebra and gorilla. And the same thing with dog and, uh, and you know, just, just some different animals. Don monkey and donkey, <laughs> they give back to some little, some, because they made by accident or they made by, you know, it's, it's, those are physical exercises. Those are biology. You didn't need to do anything for that. That is no you. That is why God, to prove that to you, Jesus said, when you leave this physical world, those are too mundane. They don't belong fire. They don't go with you to heaven. They don't live forever. They are too mundane forever, forever. They are waste. No husband, no wife, no children when you get to heaven. Heaven is for greater things. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, treasure. Those, that is not treasure enough to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. But what did Jesus say? Put your treasure in heaven. Store your treasure in heaven. So if your treasure is children, but Jesus said you will not, you will not take them to heaven. If your treasure is marriage, it's not something you can treasure in heaven. If your treasure is um, family, it's not something you could take to heaven. I don't know. And he is saying your treasure must be stored in heaven. So if these things will not be in heaven, I cannot store them in heaven. So why should I devote the whole life just for it? I better devote my own life for the greater things that could be stored in heaven. You understand why Jesus didn't marry? Why he didn't have children? It's not that it's prohibited. It's allowed. Please do it, but not at the expense of the very purpose for which you were sent here. And for which you were created. 
and for the things that you could take to heaven. God didn't give, say, okay, because you, can, you are allowed to indulge in some other things that are not bad, then just cuckoo forget about the rest. <laughs> Then just forget about the measure, the things that re, that he really sent you here for. No, he will not interchange what he has sent you here for just because you have an excuse. Jesus even goes ahead to say, the birds that fly, that they don't have to worry about things. You know why they don't have to worry? They are fulfilling purpose. As long as they are flying, they are singing. They are fulfilling purpose. God takes care of them because they are living for purpose. So he said, you too seek, the, seek first the kingdom of God. Live for purpose. Live for, you know, seek for the kingdom of God. That is the basic. That is the main val life values. They got it right. Even birds got it right. And because they got it right, God takes care of them. Takes care of them. And he said, look at the flowers. Even flowers, why is it that they don't have to worry? They don't have to care because they are functioning and doing exactly what they were created for. They didn't get an excuse and say that, well, I got distracted. I got a husband here. I got a wife here or the animals and say, oh, yeah, I got a, a, I got a mate. So and then we got children. And so I couldn't do what I. So Jesus was making it basic to us. So if the birds and the, and the flowers could focus on what they are made for, I don't have to worry about mundane things because the flowers also could say, well, I need to survive. I need water. I need oxygen. Well, and that's why I couldn't do what I need to go to work. Or the birds could say, well, I need to survive. That's why I need, I need to worry about what to keep, feed my children with. That's why I couldn't do what you sent me here for. So that's what you thought. No, you too. If this all, all mundane things can, could, could, I mean, could function, you, say, you too, trust God. Live for that original thing that God has sent you here for. Find it. Focus on it. All other things will be given to you as a result. Don't be distracted by worry by survival instinct, by uh, making a living. Life is more than making distance. Life is more than what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. Life is more than trying to make a living. Life is that thing with which you are sent here for, the obsession, the life purpose, the life, uh, the life values, the main life values that you are sent here for. Life is more than just trying to make a living. Make it, you will live when you find life. Find the life that was, sent, that was put in you for which you are sent here for. Then do that and you will discover that all other things you had wanted are also added to you. So that argument that our people have, like my mother, uh, you know, she was having because she gave birth to me and then left me with her mother and she went and married another man. And the reason why she didn't bring me up, why she didn't stay to care for me, is because everybody in the village, they had that mentality. You are still young. Go marry and to have more children. Because to them, because they are not, they don't get it. Because that is coming from their paganistic background. Because in paganism, you don't have relationship with God. So you don't know how to find out your purpose. You don't even know the Heavenly Father. So the only thing you see that is treasured around you are children. Because that's what comes out of you. It's, it's the highest level of egocentrism. Because right now, for me, there is no difference between my children and you and anybody and anybody's children. I can love, I just need to love and accept everybody the same. Uh, right now, I'm still nursing a secret dream until my wife agrees to have several more children, but not from my family, just from somewhere. 
and I'm going to love them as much as with my children. I don't even, no difference. But, you know, when you are transfixed on your children like that, it is, it's, it's a hidden egocentrism and selfishness. But because it's all accepted, and because everybody is doing it, you kind of already assume that it's normal. But really, it's selfishness. Like the story we just heard from Mrs. is that the kid that she found in the street, she's even doing more to, for that kid now than for her own children. Because children, all children are God's children. So I could have children, not necessarily by going to mate with another, I just find children that are in need of it, of me, of my love, of anybody, either they are adults or they are kids. But to just say that they have to come from my sperm, what is that? I don't even remember when that sperm came out. I don't even remember it. They didn't even do anything about it. There's nothing intentional I did. You know, if I had started and stopped and walked and said, oh, it's my sweat and my labor. No, no labor there. It just happened and my wife came to me one day and said, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, when did that happen? Because I didn't even expect it. <laughs> so it's not something that is worth me saying this is what I do. If I have them, I have to show responsibility and take care of them. And re 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 but for only for one purpose again for the purpose of duplicating that same main life values in them and pointing them to it and helping them. It's a privilege, it's an opportunity, and it's a trust for me to be able to have these children, either from, my, from me or from anywhere, to be able to have some people to lead in the right direction like this as well, to show life to them. It's an opportunity, it's a privilege. So it's, it's, it's a kind of... Children are supposed to be viewed as stewardship, not like purpose of life. I don't know if you get it. It's just my stewardship. It's my opportunity to be able to teach some, somebody the right values of life, the main values of life, you know. But it doesn't have to be my children. Could be anybody's children. But everything is just an opportunity for me to be able to help somebody to get reconnected to the purpose of life and get their own purpose as well. So the real big thing about children is not giving birth to them. The big thing, the purpose of having children is not because you give birth to them or not. It doesn't matter who gives birth to them. The big thing about children is to be able to connect them back to their maker and give them direction in life. So what's the essence of, what's the good in you giving birth to children and they will still become demons? Where's the pride? But the real pride, the real essence, the real assignment, the real big deal about children is your ability to connect them to their source and teach them the life principles. So it's not about giving birth, it's not the birth that is the big deal. But it is the what you do with them after they come. But that, what uh, all I was trying to tell us is that the culture we come from, people are more making a big deal. Okay, for example, so I was telling my mother later on when I got to meet her, that why are you giving birth to all these children? Then the husband, who, the woman she married, answered for her. She didn't want to because she, I think it was stressful for her. But the husband, the coach was saying, no, she must keep on going, even birth. So uh, the husband was kind of saying, you are, is it because she's your mother? You want to discourage her to, give, to be giving birth, but she gave birth to you? But anyway, so she was saying, we have to give birth to as many, he was saying, sorry, the husband, we have to give birth to as many as possible because, what, you said it in Yoruba, Amor Itomashe, or is it Itomashe, Itomashe, or how did I say, is that? Did I say, did, what, do you get the meaning? No, no, it's too much. She really, yeah. So, oh my God. Ah, boy, too much. She really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just try to get it that it's something she, yeah, she really. Trying to say, we don't know which one of, so they are gambling, basically. We don't know which one 
We have to give that as many as possible because we don't know which one of them will we'll be, be successful. Will be, we'll we'll be success, successful or prominent in life. So we just want to give as give birth to as many as possible. Maybe one of them will hit the stars. <laughs> So that when at least one of them makes it, they could take care of us. Yeah. So they are just gambling, but they are using the life of that woman to do that. Now she's dead, and the man is still alive because she was giving birth to all those children. You are using another life, jeopardizing another life, just because you are gambling to say. <laughs> So that whole culture is based on those paganistic and lack of God. But right now, some of the places we call church, they now are promoting the same thing. Yes. Yep. Instead of promoting relationship with God, still worship before God. Instead of promoting purpose, accomplishing the, the reason why you are here, but they are still promoting, oh, I mean, it's a big thing to pray prayer for barrenness and yeah, children. Yeah. It's like the church is even existing for it. Yeah, yeah. it's a money spinner. Yeah. yeah. And this is still coming from that paganistic mindset. They don't care what happens later on. Just have the child. <laughs> they don't care about what happens later on. How you raise him up, how you... Just have the child. So ignorance is a result of ignorance. And you only begin to live when you begin to live for something that is greater than you. When you begin to live for other people. When you begin to live for greater purposes, God's purposes, God's intention, God's will on earth as it is in heaven. When you begin to live for the kingdom, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of that things shall be added unto you. That's when you leave. That's why a lot of parents, when the children grow up, it's like their life is gone. Their life is finished. They don't know what to do. When the kids, when the last baby leaves home, mm -hmm. it's like they are, they are ready to die. Their life is gone. Then some people will uh, requalify themselves to say, okay, now we are going to be taking care of their children. <laughs> Grandchildren. Because they don't count their own life as meaningful. They don't find purposes for their own life. And they don't know that that way they are slapping God in the face. That God, I'm nothing. Which is an insult because God didn't make you as nothing. God spent, sent everyone here with a purpose. And he has put a lot of resources in you to be able to be exceptional. So how old are you is the question here. So then what has happened to those years and those days that you lived already? What happened to them? Where are they? And that's why what uh, Ola said about Europeans who said, no, we want to live for something. We want to make an impact. We want to, we want to change the world. We don't, have, we don't have to have children. No, we don't want to have, have children because it's a distraction. A lot of distraction in having children. We want to leave. But if you can combine them, go ahead. But first of all, find life. Live for something before you get distraction. And then learn to manage distractions before you go into the distractions. <laughs> Some people will be shocked at what they're hearing. But what I'm saying is, learn, first of all, discover your life purpose before you try to give birth to children. And learn, also learn how to manage the process so that when you are, you, it's not going to stop you from pursuing your life purpose. So you still have to, you are still having children, but you are fulfilling purpose at the same time. It doesn't just take you away from it. Okay. How old are you? What is the result of those days that you have already lived through? Like I said, most people, when you, they tell you you are 50 years old, where is the 50? Nothing. Why is it 40 years? Uh, I don't know. 
where is the 35 years? Uh, it's gone. What happened to you? How old are you? 25? Yeah, where is the 25? Uh, I don't know. I'm just 25 now. But the other deception is that people who are 25, 35, 40, 30, they're thinking, I'm still hope, they're still hoping somewhere inside that something will still happen somehow, somewhere. That will enable them, that will, something will just happen that will give them the opportunity to do everything they had wanted to do. You know, people live in that dream. Yes. That something will happen one day. Mm. No, I believe. I believe. God will open the door. Breakthrough will come. God will answer my prayers. Somebody will call from somewhere mm. and say, take all the money yes. and go and do everything you want to do. Or God will answer so what will God do? You know, he will send an angel, maybe he a human angel to you, who will just say, ah, you are the mother of this. Ah, okay, come. We take care of all your needs. So go and, you know. So some people are still living in that dream world, fantasy world of something will happen somewhere and everything will just be okay. And the problems of today will just cease. There will be no problem, so I will be able to live the life that I want. It doesn't happen like that. It will never happen. Nothing will happen all of a sudden. Miracles will not happen. Miracles will not happen. Hmm. Nothing will happen all of a sudden. The open the doors of heaven will not the old windows of heaven will not all of a sudden open <laughs> and pour some provisions to your head. It won't. Breakthrough will not come. <laughs> open heaven won't happen. You know, okay, open heaven, you are waiting for it. The only open heaven that you will have is what you have had so far. No more open heaven will come than that. The open heaven you will have is this, everything you have experienced. If it is failure you have experienced, that is the open heaven you will have. It is, if it is you're just struggling, you have experienced, that's the open heaven you have. Heaven will not open more than it is already open right now. <laughs> the, all the opening of heaven that will happen has already happened. There is rain coming down, that is open heaven. There is oxygen coming down, that is open heaven. More, no more. All the open heaven that are necessary, God already put them in you. So the open heaven you are waiting for is illusion. It's a mirage. The breakthrough you are waiting for, God has already given you. He blessed them and told them to be fruitful. That is all the breakthrough you are going to have. So waiting for that something will just happen from somewhere, Take care of your life right now. <laughs> Begin to do it. I'll, okay, like my sister said, oh, I got a visa to, to travel abroad. Okay, you got green card? Then your struggle starts. A close heaven starts from there. <laughs> That's when you begin to st struggle now. Because struggles will be real in the U.S. just as it was in Africa. <laughs> Only in Africa, nobody is forcing you to walk by all means. But in the U.S., Uncle Sam is there waiting for you. <laughs> Abuse. We, 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 they will help you. They will force you by force <laughs> to go and become a slave. So, so that, that is another illusion that I'm believing God. I'm believing God. No. It's, your life is a picture of your day. The day, every day, Either good or bad is the picture of your life. There will not be, your life will not happen when the breakthrough comes and brings something to your life. No, your life will not begin when some event, some big, some people are saying, my life will begin when I, when I marry. Ask those who are married. <laughs> More complications begin when you are married. Oh, my life will begin when I have children. Ask those who have children. More complications begin when they have children. 
So your life is a picture of your day is a picture of your whole life. The way you live every day is the way your whole life is and will be. So nothing will change tomorrow until you change it. Nothing will change tomorrow until you change it, change it and take responsibility for it. And sit down and learn and plan your life out. That I want it to change you and if you want to change, plan it today. Put things in place for that, that you want to be changed tomorrow, today. Miracles won't happen tomorrow. Breakthrough won't happen. The only miracle that has happened to people is that they die. Mm. People who have been waiting, a lot of people who are waiting like that, that break, my breakthrough will soon come. My breakthrough, they die. The, the, but what happens is that when those people die, you know what we do? We always think, ah, it's a pity, brother, something died. Ah, ah they didn't live too long ago. Ah, and they still had some dreams. So he told me the other time that he wanted to do this. Ah, death, eh? No problem. It means his time has come. Ah, his time has come. Okay, at least he has done his own race. Not knowing that you are the next. Mm. Okay. When his friends, the one who you are just talking about now, when his friends died, he was saying the same thing. Mm. Because he thought the whole life is still ahead of him. And his breakthrough, his breakthrough will still come. Just like you are talking about him now, that he died, oh, it's a pity. He didn't, the breakthrough never came. But it means his time is up. That's what you are saying now. Tomorrow you will die. And your friend will be saying the same thing. That, ah, his time is done, it's gone, but it's a pity he didn't say it. The only, that's the only breakthrough that comes. You die. And you didn't see the breakthrough. So for you to see breakthrough, to change the trajectory or trajectory, no, to a trajectory or pro pro whatever you are projecting from, the only way to change that and for that is to you have to fulfill destiny every day. You've got to eat that elephant daily. Mm -hmm. It will not be, there will not be a day that I will just get angry one day and finish the elephant. <laughs> no, you will not be able to finish the elephant no matter how hungry you are that day. It is the elephant, the piece that you eat every day that eventually finishes, wipes out the elephant. It is your daily, it's not something that will happen on my anniversary or in the day that God gives the anointing that will make you to fulfill your destiny. No, that day will never come. You live life, you live destiny out by what you do every day, no matter how small. There will be no good days that everything will just, you will just have the energy and the moves to finish up everything and fulfill destiny one day. Yes. <laughs> it will never happen like that. But it is what you will do, both in good days and bad days, every day, good or bad, that will determine what you are able to accomplish in life. That's why you needed the topic we spoke about yesterday, routine. Routine helps you to keep on a fulfilling destiny every day, good or bad. Bad weather, good weather, you are fulfilling destiny. So you don't need to wait for any special day. Believe me, you can, I cannot overemphasize this. How many people are waiting that tomorrow will be better? By the grace of God, I will find favor. God will help. My brother will come. When your brother comes, you'll be excited for one day. The next day, you are looking at one another. Andra, and, and, adrenaline, or what do you call it? Adrenaline. Adrenaline, adrenaline, you know, will only last you for a second or two. You need to get yourself into the regime, into a routine. Either there is adrenaline or there is no adrenaline, you are walking. And you are making something happen on a daily basis. You know, there are a lot of people, especially where we come from, 
who say, well, by the time I give back to my children, my, I would have, my life would begin. My, 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 my dream will come to pass. They give back to the children, then they realize that that is the beginning of trouble. <laughs> because you have to put the pampers. <laughs> and you have to feed all the time. Then you have, you have post-traumatic <coughs> depression. Then you have the emotions. Then your husband is gone. Then you are alone. Then you need to cook. Your trouble starts. Trouble your, regime. Your, yeah, your life didn't start. Your life stops. Oh, when I get married is when... Okay, for example, some people say, I'm called to be a missionary, a, a lady. I'm called to be a missionary, but... As a woman, as a single woman, you cannot be a missionary. I'm waiting for my husband by God's grace. I'm waiting that God will bring the right man, then we'll go together. When the right man comes, that's when everything you forget. <laughs> now you can even think about God. When the right man comes, you begin to think about the man. Because you, you didn't put my food on the table. You're a bad wife. And you discover that I don't want to be a bad wife. <laughs> That becomes your preoccupation. Your life stops. Your life don't start, it stops. But your life will start when you take a hold of your destiny, your future, your dream, break them down to concrete steps of what you want to do on a daily basis, and begin to do all those steps, two, three, four, five steps on a daily basis, and move and keep on doing them just... Either you have the mood or you don't have the mood on a daily basis. That's how you live your life. And that's how you build your future life. And that's how you build the life that you could be proud of. That's why if you die now, you have already created something. Every day you are creating it. It is what you create on a daily basis. It is not what you are going to create one day when everything is good. So your day, your daily activity, the goals you accomplish daily is the picture of how your whole life will end and how your whole life will end up being and the accomplishment of your whole life, the accomplishments of your day and the accomplishment of your whole life. A good day will not come when you will do one big achievement. No. It is like trying to fall a tree. You are cutting the tree, a big tree. You have a hard axe, so you are cutting it. And then on the 100 heat stroke, the tree falls. So which one falls the tree? The first stroke or the last stroke? Or the middle stroke? All. That is how life is. It is the process of what you do keep on doing on a daily basis. That's what forms your life. So your day, your day, what I cannot overemphasize. Because you've lived a certain amount of years already and you cannot find it. This is the reason why. You didn't live your life as if your one day is the picture of your life. Okay. We should be able to measure our day. We don't have such a result because we haven't ever measured our days. The Bible says, So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Psalm chapter 90 verse 12. Example, Pastor's result at the age of 45 is God Embassy Church. Even at the age of even at the age of 30, even at the age of 31, by the, by the age of 33, I built the largest church in Europe. So when you say you are 33 years old, yes. So what what's your why, why is that 33? Look around, look everywhere. Go to any continent, you will see the result of my 33 years of life. When I got my books in Chinese, I said, well, i never been to China. Who did it? <laughs> my books are there. Japan. Brazil. Mm. 
That's life. And that life came from not all of a sudden. Daily, 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 daily. I mean, I get some testimonies and thanks later from some islands that I don't even know exist. Why? That life. Your daily activity is a picture of your life. What I do daily, making my life to be impactful. I didn't even know you exist. But, that, but they know me there and they are thankful. Daily activities. So if you ask me, well, I'm 52 now, I'm going to 52 now, I say, where is your life, 52? Everywhere, go into any continent. I didn't waste it. It didn't go in the tin here. I didn't flush it. I invested it. And that investment has to be every day. So when you are every day doing something with your life, you are either spending it just spend or you are wasting it which is similar to spend or you are investing it back into your destiny back into your purpose that is what life is supposed to be about we should measure even not only years but days and the best thing if you are going to measure your life by years Oh, I'm 40 years old. Oh, I'm 50. You are going to be thinking that I will do something next year. But what is next year? There is no one bunch of what next year. Next year is made up of days. So it's what you do every day that will determine what you have next year. It's not what you will do next year. You will never do anything next year. There is no next year. Next year is a mirage. It's an illusion. Next year is what you do every day. So let's say again. We should measure even not only years but days. And the best thing is to measure hours. And to even make yourself more effective, don't even just think about days. Begin to count and measure your hours. Be conscious of what you do in an hour. That will make you to be much more effective. So instead of saying, okay, tomorrow I will travel. But when you think of, when I wake up tomorrow, you're thinking of every hour what you do, that's why you are doing HMT. We make you to be productive every hour. We make you to read books, we make you to do assignments, we make you to read. You know, you, you, it's like, that's what we try to do here. That's why it's so intensive. It's so intense here. We make you to make every hour count. That is why we are doing what we're doing. So you know it's very intense here, right? Yeah. Because we want you to make use of, to convert every hour. So it's now your job when you go back home to not just count days. But in that day, at least make sure that you maximize and convert four hours for purpose or six hours for purpose. At least two hours Make sure you pinning down the hours for your good. Using them, making sure that they work for you. And you do what you want to do. And get the result you want. Rather than just pushing you around and making you a victim. <laughs> what do we spend our time on? So the key question is, if you want to count hours, how do you spend your hours? On daily basis. Look at an average day in your life, in your family, not here in Ukraine, but where you are coming from, and answer the question to yourself. If you want to measure your life by hours or your typical day by hours, how do you spend your hour? How many of the hours really are being spent the way God will have you spend them? And how many of the hours you cannot even account for? So let me show you the picture of how we spend our life and our hours. I have a picture here for you. Every person... 
by crown. Yes. Every person has 24 hours a day. Eight hours of sleep. Every person has 24 hours a day. Eight hours are for sleeping. Eight hours are for the job or working. Three hours are for commuting. Three hours are for cooking and eating. One hour is for running errands like going to the bank, shops, markets. One hour is for the mode of life, cleaning, ironing, washing, personal care, makeup. We need all these things, but they are vanity. People don't even realize it. That is what they actually live their lives for. Unknowingly, they don't realize it. By the time you look at all these things, they are all necessary. But none of them is substantial in relation to your life and eternity. So we live running the rat race around this vicious circle and think we have life. But it's called illusion of life. Deception of life. And they are unnecessary. So the battle of life is, how do I push these things away from my path? Away from my life? How do I minimize them? Or how do I crush them? Or reduce them? How do I get out of them? It's like if you are clouded. With, you know, it's like you are buried under these things. How do I remove them from me and bring my head up and do what I really want? That is the challenge of life. And that's why you needed all those seven teachings we did before now. Plants will help you to put these things back. Structure your life obsession with life's main values will help you to get rid of some of this. Global purpose will help you to push back some of this. General plans will put these things in their places. Long-term plan will help you to avoid some of this. But routine will make you master of them. Can you read that again? Every person has 24 hours a day. Eight hours are for sleeping. Eight hours are for the job or walking. Uncle Sam. Three hours are for commuting. That's Six. transportation. Three hours are for cooking and eating. One hour is for running errands. But this is so painful, I'm telling you. This is hard to reckon. Because it's, it's one thing for you not to have known it. You just think, you know, you are doing something. But when it's broken down, and you really see what you, and the truth in it, it's heartbreaking. Go ahead, sir. One hour is for running errands, like going to the banks, shops, markets. One hour is for the mode of life, cleaning, ironing, washing, personal care and makeup all these we we need all these all these things but they are vanity so you see why i did that me uh, message why my wife doesn't cook and i don't drive it's coming from what i know guys if i could afford afford it i'm going to avoid it there's no chance <laughs> no church. If I add church to it, it's bad news. If I add church to that, it's bad news. Ah, no church. If I add church to that one, for church. yeah, nice video every day. That will even make things worse. It makes your life more cramped. Makes your life more cramped. What about things like exercise? But that's not bad because that gives you some strength to be able to do what you really want to do. But most people don't even do that. 
Hah? <coughs> yeah. Okay, so let's go. What else do we spend our time on? Conversation on no, the this, phone? No, this, 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 this I took from, I got, you know, I, you know, I do trainings like this all the time. So I did interview, I did a poll, and I asked real people, what time, what do you really do to spend your time on? And these are what real people said. Okay, what are they? Conversations on the phone. Is that, does that exist? <laughs> okay, there's what? Internet. Does that exist? Bad news. Bad news. Social media. Yep. Chatting with friends. Does that exist? Ooh. Watching TV. Can you believe that? This is who we are. Can you find the main life uh, values here? Yeah. Yeah. Or global purpose here? Yeah? General plans here? Yeah? This makes us look naked. It just comes to expose us. <laughs> These are all the emptiness we're all looking for, guys. Living for. Okay? Watching TV. Getting children ready for school. Kindergarten. Communication with husband. Vacations. Nature walks to the seaside. Parents or relatives. Hygiene. Hairdressing salon, quarreling, <laughs> arguing, <laughs> sicknesses. We spend life on these things. Dentist, manicure, spots. <laughs> Spot is a big one. <laughs> Washing spots and playing oh, spots. Especially in England. In wow. England. So look at how this is a picture of your life, unfortunately. And it could all be qualified by one word, vanity. So let's ask that question again. Where is the where is the twenty years? You see this where you may have gone. Why is the ten years of your life? The thirty years you live. You are forty years old. Why is the forty years? This is where it's gone. Where is the thirty five years? This is it. That's why you can't see it anywhere. No, somebody is asking what what do we do then? Okay, let's keep on going. <laughs> let's keep on going. You will see what to do. <laughs> okay. What things would we like to do? Now this is the answer. So if, what thing what things do we in your heart, your heart of heart, in your heart of heart, what are those things that you really would like to do in your life? What are those things you would really have liked to invest your life in? This is the real answer now. What things would we like to do if we were in ideal conditions? To fulfill purpose in life, mission, family, self-education, fellowship with God, reading of the Bible, church, ministry, social activity, charity. What do people want in reality? So what do we all, all of us, what do we really want in reality? Number one, everybody would like to fulfill their destiny. Everybody would like to fulfill what is in their heart. But you know what? They are clouded by all these things. They, in their heart, somewhere, subconscious mind, they, are, they would like to live for something greater. But the reality of life, they don't know how to overcome these things. Okay. The next one is mission. Some people would like to have a mission to somewhere, do something, do something great, memorable, historical. But, and it is when you come to the West, you will know that you are, you are almost helpless. You are almost powerless. Because all these other things, in the West, they are <gasps> screaming at you. Dominating you. You don't dominate. What are the things we really want? We want to really invest in our families. But we hardly do. We just run. Then self-education. Many people don't do it because they don't have time. Fellowship with God. Many people would like to have fellowship with God. Just go to the woods and solitude and just walk on the sea and just talk to God. But they can't. They can't afford it because they are tongue thoughts, millions of thoughts in their mind. 
They have to run, they have to do this, they have to make money. Reading the Bible. Some people would like to really sit down and explore the Bible, but could they? They can't afford it. Church, you know, maybe spiritual service, ministry, social work, charity. These are just a few of the things that people would really like to do. But they don't get to because vanity. What do people spend their time on? Eight hours are for sleeping. Eight hours are for the job or working. Three hours are for commuting. Three hours are for cooking and eating. One hour is for running errands like going to the banks, shops, and markets. One hour is for the mode of life, cleaning, ironing, washing, personal care, makeup. This is what our flesh needs so this is what our flesh needs needs so that our body could live on earth. Those are vanity, the demands of your flesh. And uh, I'm just having a comparative uh, table here, just for you to compare. So those are the things you, you that, that's the vicious circle where you find yourself in, either you like it or not, unless you unconsciously stop that rat race. But what do you, your heart and soul really want? Those are the things your heart and soul really want on the other side. What would people like to spend their life on? So what do you, those are the things you like, you really, your real self really wanted to, but the thing you end up doing, and here. Purpose in life, purpose in life, mission, family, self-education, fellowship with God, reading the Bible, church, ministry, social activity, charity. This is what will be important and lead to, and lead to heaven. And they give you legacy. But we don't really have time for them. They are so overclouded that you don't, you don't even think about them. People don't have time for the most important things. People do not even do the things which are a real wish of their hearts. We don't do the most important things in our life. We waste our life. We spend it on the things that will stay on the earth. That will remain on the earth. Like that's what I was trying to say about children, family, husband, wife. They are not in heaven. They will remain here. But we need to actually spend life on things that will be stored up there for us. Love, kindness, giving, service, stewardship, leadership, relationship. Different kind of, you know, things that, will, things that are not tangible. If not to determine scope and limits for yourself. When we die, we will all be shocked that we didn't manage to do anything in our lives. Is there anyone who agrees that this, his life is similar to this? The person will not have the time to look back when he or she realize, realizes that he or she is standing before death. Staying in the illusion that everything is good, the person wastes time irre irrevocably. So if you don't, well, that, sorry for that English up there, the title. If you don't construct limit, you know, boundaries or limitation, limits and boundaries for yourself, that will be your, what will you end up having at the end of your life, regret. So boundaries, like system and organization, Boundaries and limits are the things that will keep you off some of those things. So you've got to create limits for your own life. Boundaries for your own life. Because they help you to overcome all this vanity. Intentional boundaries. I, you know the way I say it? I tell my people I created a prison for myself in this house and in, but actually it's my vision i created i put out my sketch my schedules and my routine and i put myself there as a prisoner so the only thing i do is just the routines you have to create your own prison if you don't create your own prison look at your prison they are already waiting for you 
Look, mm. these things are creating prisons for you. They are taking you hostage. All these things. These are your hostage. These are your prison. Mm. They don't take permission from you. They put you in their own prison because you didn't create your own prison. Number three, bells that are waiting for the person. There are three warnings in life, like, like alarms. It's supposed to be written, not bells, alarms. There are three alarms that are waiting for you. You see in that book, you saw in that book, who will come to your funeral if you read it. Yeah. I wrote about it there. Okay. Bells. Okay, alarms. Or alarms. If you do not discipline yourself, the follow three warnings will be waiting for you. So one, alarms are warning. One, gray hair, first alarm. <laughs> God allows us to have gray hair to kind of psychologically get you ready that you are not going to be here forever. It's an alarm system of God. So when you begin to have your first strength of gray hair, it's a wake-up call. Maybe it's actually better to say wake-up call than alarm. Mm. Is it, yeah, is it, is it, is a great wake-up call for you. So gray hair is the major, major wake-up call. You are going soon. You are going soon. You are going soon. And the thing with the wake up, I mean, with the alarms and the wake up calls, this gray hair, is that it's, it will be everywhere. If you say, I don't have hair like Pastor Ernest, yeah. Yeah, you'll find it somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you look under your armpit, you'll find it. If you look under your feet, you'll find it. Anywhere you find, you'll find it. God has set it up that way. <laughs> you can't escape it. And you cannot have an excuse that I don't have hair in my head. <laughs> So God has set you up that you you'll be reminded anyhow. <laughs> if you look in your nose, you'll be reminded. <laughs> God is not sparing you. He wants to, you to know that. Hey, don't say I didn't tell you. <laughs> Number two, pension. The second. Alarm. alarm. The second well, we alarm is wake up, wake up call. What do you call it? Do we call it pension in the West? Yeah. Retirement. 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 Yeah. Retirement. Yes. Pension. It's for you to know that they are done with you. It's not just. <laughs> it's not just the gray hair telling you that you are you are expiring, but even the whole system that you had served all your life. Where you are giving eight hours to on daily basis, running to, drinking that is your source of sustenance. Even that now is turning against you and telling you that you are expired. They retire you. You need to use the. You go there, no? Okay, okay, okay. Then the third alarm, I mean, wake up call. Number three, wake up call, coughing. The last farewell. <laughs> You saw, you saw in the dark. <laughs> That's already gone. That's too late. <laughs> you die, and then you have to answer. Also, yeah. Even the death of others. Even the death of others are supposed to be an alarm for you. Mm. But we don't always. Uh... Now, we huh? Out. Yeah, we just think. Yeah, we just think it's not. Thank God, I'm still alive. It's not me. <laughs> but we are supposed to be making decisions and be. So death, coffin, all those things are supposed to gear our, gear us up, and wake us up, wake up call. That hey, fulfill your purpose. Hey, fulfill your purpose. Each time you see your gray hair, hey, fulfill your purpose. Hey. You can dye the air, you know, you, paint, you can paint the air on the head, but you cannot paint it everywhere, you know. <laughs> it will still remind you anyhow. <laughs> before painting, you see it before you paint. <laughs> Even if you want to paint, you will see it before you paint. Mm. 
Wake up call. Number one, gray hair. It is God's providence, a, a signal for the person to stop and think about eternal life. Stop and think. Yeah. Your purpose in eternity, why you are sent here, your journey. About the fact that he or she will answer before God. This is a signal that not much time is left. The more gray hair you have, the louder God cries. Your chances diminish. God wants to reach every person. It is the nature that will testify against you that God gave you a chance. What does gray hair say about you? If gray hair appears early, it means that the person should run twice as fast. Mm. For many people, gray hair is not their fame. If the person doesn't live each day for his or her purpose, gray hair will not become his or her fame. Glory, glory. Oh, glory. You know, in the Bible it says, gray hair is the glory of the old man. So it, will not, it might not become your glory because because what, why do they say glory? Because by the time you have gray hair, you've already accomplished so much. Mm -hmm. So gray hair comes to confirm all your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. But these days, it comes to confirm your lost years. No glory. Mm -hmm. If the person doesn't live each day for his or her purpose, gray hair will not become his or her glory. This is why people are ashamed of gray hair. Got no glory for it in exchange for it. So it's shame, so people don't want to keep it. Examples of Pastor Sunday. Pastor hasn't got any gray hair, but when it appears, Pastor wants to be proud of it. Moreover, he wants to have I'm a waiting for it. I can't wait. Another surprising one. Yeah? Yeah. What? That you don't have. It's surprising. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for it and it's not coming. I'm really waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, Simon, there's still a lot of I see a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because I have bed for myself yeah, yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moreover, he wants to have a beard. This when I have gray hair, I want to then release a bird. Mm -hmm. uh, because the gray hair is my glory. I want to let the world, let the world see the glory. But I don't want it black. I want it gray. In my head, I hear. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he wants to have a beard. These things will be like his fame, his fame or glory, <laughs> honor and praise. It will be a reminder that soon he will be. I'm he going will home go for my to reward. get his reward. I'm going home. That soon he will go home because earth is not his home. Yes, I'm going home for my reward. See my gray hair. Soon, soon, it will come. Number two, pension or retirement. <laughs> Look at that photograph. <laughs> oh, no, it is depressing. <laughs> but it's the real reality for many people. Wow, that photograph is tough. What the bell? It's a major bell, that, that photograph right there. Pension or retirement was thought up by the human system, but God allowed it to exist. <laughs> See on the tablet. <laughs> My God. <laughs> All the medicines. <sighs> the world to which you serve, the slave of which you were, testifies that you were written off you were thrown away. But the condition is that you have to bring a new labor force in your place. Your children. Even the world rejects you. Go away, die. That's what retirement is. You are no more needed. We got all your Jews. Like a bell, a whole Europe waiting for pension. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
like a day of birth. Mm. Mm. They were afraid. Mm. The illusion of this day, of this period. Mm. It's, it's a paradox. Sending you, to, you gave them 40 years of your life working. 30 years, 40 years. And, sorry. You have to go to retirement now. They tell you go and rest, but really it means go and die. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't tell you the truth. They try to palate it, palate it to make it like not so bad is good. Just go and rest. But really it's saying just go and die. Do you have children? Oh good, 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 good. Your children will take your place. We don't need you anymore. We took the best, all we could took from all we could take from you, we took it. Number three wake up call, coughing. It is even not a an alarm, it is already a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it is no longer an alarm, it's a sentence. <laughs> it could be sentence for other people, but if you are smart, you could learn from that sentence. Well, if it is your own sentence, bad news. There is no chance either for repentance or for changing. For some people, it will be terrible. For others, it will be a triumph. Life is to be lived so that it was not excruciatingly painful for wasted years. So that Alexander life... Ostrovich. It's a genito of Ostrovsky photograph it, Pastor Avila. It's a genito of Pastor Avila. No, it's a genito on. Okay, no problem. Life is to be lived in such a way, the translation is not so perfect. Life is to be lived in such a way so that it won't be excruciatingly painful for those wasted years. That's what it says. Yeah, you must live a life in such a way to maximize, maximize life in such a way. Maximize it so that there will be no ex those excruciating pain of those lost years or wasted years. What is life given for? Each of us is giving life on the earth with one purpose, to determine our place in eternity, and eternity is billions of years, it is for always. A person is given 70 years so that he or she lived them in such a way so as to be in paradise or in hell forever. So this is a time of decision, you decide your lifestyle, how you live, you yourself pick it. You pick where you're going to be. Myths and illusions imposed on people to live for the family, for children, to plant a tree, to build a house, to raise a son. Those are the deceptions that people live for, the myth. In reality, this descendants after four generations will not be able to remember the names of those who who, whose blood is in their veins. Say the last and the middle name of, you, of your great-grandmother four generations back. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought they were living for you. The deceptions. Example, I have erected a miraculous monument. You see in that book too? Alexander Pushkin is the guy, he's a black guy. Wow. Yeah, he's African. His father. Mm -hmm. I have erected a miraculous monument. A monument I have raised that never that never hands. That hands, not that, not never built by hands. Yeah. Okay, that never built by that hands. That was not built. A monument that was not built by human hands. What is that monument? 
So he said, I've erected a monument, a statue okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, for myself. My life, everyday life, is building a monument that was not built by human hands, but history. Mm -hmm. I have erected a miraculous monument, a monument I've raised that never hands could build. Not many people remember how many children he had, but his name is remembered. Why? Because he fulfilled his calling. He didn't sleep at nights. He was writing his papers and his name remains in the centuries. His name is Alexander Pushkin. Pushkin. Yes. He's the greatest writer in the history of Russia. Yeah. The greatest writer in the history of Russia and is the one that is responsible for the modern Russian language. He formulated the Russian, Russian language we use today. No greater writer. He's, a, he's called the father of Russian literature. And it's like the Shakespeare of, yes. of Russia. He yes. died before 40. And he died only at 37. <laughs> and he was able to accomplish all that. He built a monument that cannot be erased by history. Every person that lives for himself or herself or for the family or for the children will die and memory about them disappears. Every person that lives for God or people will be remembered. So there are only two ways for you to be remembered. Live for God, live for your purpose and live for people. Give your life for people, for others. And God doesn't change his principles. Example, he served devil. This man, Vladimir Lenin. He served devil. His ideology was wrong, but he will be remembered because he didn't live for himself. He lived for people for the sake of principles and ideals. So even though he's not living for God, he didn't even believe in God, he did the wrong things, but because when you live for others, for something greater than yourself, you will still be remembered anyway. Mm -hmm. The names of his contemporaries who fused over their children how to raise them up are not remembered. People who live for their children at the same time, they, were not they are not remembered anymore. But he that even lived for, the, you know, for evil doctrines, but because it was not for himself, lived for people in general, he will still be remembered. But you who say you are good living for children, you will not be remembered. How many children Jesus have? If the person should live only for children, then Jesus is a great loser in life. He gave birth to millions through fulfilling God's will in his life. And who thinks that if he or she doesn't have children, then it is a big tragedy? Who told you such nonsense? <laughs> Do you want to be remembered? Serve the Lord and fulfill your calling on the earth and he will erect a miraculous monument for yourself for centuries. Only things that we do for the creator, purposes of heaven, all people can live in the centuries. God's will should be higher than everything. It's only when you live for God, when you live for your purpose, when you live for people, other people, then you live forever, then you are remembered. Life detects what it wants. Life imposes vain pastimes on the person. The entire course of life makes a person live as everybody does, so that he or she will not even be remembered after death. That is the pressure of life. We want to do what everybody else is doing. But for you to be remembered, you must choose your own path and walk your own way to fulfill your own purpose, not just follow the crowd. Examples of Pastor Sunday organizes communication, organizes educational retreats, studies, because all these things are connected with his purpose. To fulfill his purpose, he enclosed himself in jail. Most of his time he spends in the basement of his house teaching his followers. And the heavens fill this, base, this basement. The pastor's efforts are taken into account by the heavens.
the one I do training for my people, we don't do it in such places. We do. We have a hall underground here because oh. it's bigger. Yeah, for three hundred people. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm calling, talking about the basement. Examples of Pastor Sunday number two, the teachings of Pastor the teachings of Pastor shows that there is no time to go to the beach or to the or to the cinema. This is interpreted by some people as fanatic. However, in reality, this is a sober outlook on life, life without labels. If we analyze and think deeply, we should really live like pastor does. Live in your own purpose. Put yourself in the prison of your, of your uh, global, global, yes, global purpose global purpose and your routines you have to fight for your life if the person doesn't start to fight for his eternity destiny life then life then nothing will remain of him or her only those who are the strongest those who think overcome the pressures of life and start living a new life got to be strong for yourself say no to all other things and say yes to your own purpose statements number one if you want it very much you will live the life that you want to have you have to want it badly if you want it bad enough you'll be able to live the life you want number two your destiny is in your hands you decide i think my time is up right isn't it oh no okay see how much more time Oh, okay. 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 A detailed analysis of what we spend our time on. Can you... Okay. On the average, the productive time of a person is eight hours. Yeah. What do we spend 10 minutes on? 10 minutes of our... What do we spend 10 minutes... What do we spend 10 minutes on? 10 minutes of our effective working time could be spent on drinking coffee, having a shower, cleaning our teeth. Comparative table, 10 minutes a day. Minutes. During the year, ten minutes a day. Ten equals, minutes a day equals seven point five days a year, equals thirty five days after five years, and three hundred and eighty days after fifty years. So, if you waste ten minutes, you have wasted three eighty days. That is, you have wasted over a year. Just ten minutes. Ten minutes of your wasted life means that by the time you are fifty, you have wasted one year. By just by you using 10 minutes, not on purpose. Only 10 minutes equals one year later on. But if you do the right thing 10 minutes every day, you have it's in 50 years, it will be equal to one year of waste investment. Mm -hmm. But if you waste 10 minutes, say it's over a year in 50 years. Terrifying truths. Terrifying truth. The process of cleaning teeth takes one year out of 50 years of your life. To waste 10 minutes a day during a 50 year period means we waste one year of life. It takes one year out of your life. What can a person spend 15 minutes on? 15 minutes of our effective working time can be spent on having a snack. No, what I mean by effective working time is that we are not, I'm not counting when you are sleeping. I'm talking about your life when you are like when you are not sleeping, when you are awake. Eight hours, eight hours of working life, okay. So let's say you are just eating. 15 minutes is just for snacks. So what does that equal to? 15 minutes equals 11 days, 11 days during the, during for a year. year. 
in a year it takes us uh, eleven yeah. days. Okay, fifteen minutes in a year equals eleven days, and in five years equals fifty-seven days, <laughs> and after fifty years equals five hundred and seven days, days or two years. years. Just fifteen minutes of wasted time. In fifty years, it has taken two years out of your life. Just fifteen minutes every day you waste. Fifteen minutes, that's what you get. What can a person spend 30 minutes on? 30 minutes of our effective working time could be spent on make, make, make up, internet, telephone conversations. 30 minutes after one year equals 23 days. After five years equals 114 days. And after 50 years equals 1,140 days, which is 3.5 years. That's just 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes you waste takes that three, three, three and a half years out of your life. In 50 years. So we are, we're asking you, where is your life? Where is the life you live? You know, you see where it is. <laughs> okay. What can a person spend one hour on? One hour of our effective working time could be spent on commuting, internet, telephone conversations, chatting, bringing up children or family. So this is really compelling, right? This is an eye opener. It is compelling to open your eyes to see the reality of what your life has been like. One hour after one year equals 1.5 months. After five years, it was 228 days. And after 50 years, it was 2,281 days, which is seven years. Just wonder why you waste. <laughs> <laughs> One hour wasted takes away seven years from your life. I, later on, I will call Ano and maybe Mayo and other people who are living in this house to tell you what Pastor, how, pastor, how pastor spends his days, his, his hours. So people don't even know that when I come on here and I spend two, three hours just doing podcasts that I'm wasting, I'm, I'm not wasting, I'm investing a whole lot. I would rather give them money. It's a big investment. But you can see now. Terrifying truth. One hour a day of empty pastimes during the year will make up 46 days. In 50 years, that will be seven years. This is the time spent just on phone conversations. What can a person spend two hours on? Two hours of our effective working time could be spent on transport or TV. Some people watch movies or what do you call it? Uh, series. Series. So can you imagine two hours just sitting down watching a movie? And some people do that once a week. Every day, sir. Every day. Some people do it every day. So what does that mean? Two hours after one year equals 91 days, which is three months. After five years equals 456 days, which is one and a half years. And after 50 years equals 4,563 days, which is 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just wasting two hours doing some rubbish. So this all comes to this conclusion that we just have to create our routine mm. and put yourself in your dream, in your global vision, your global purpose, and lock yourself in there and begin to do only meaningful things with your life. Terrifying truth. Two hours of empty pastimes during the year will make up 91 days or three months and 14 years out of 50 years of our life. The question for those who are older than 50 years old are, where are 20, 30 years of your life? Hmm. 20 to 30 years we are spent on useless telephone conversations hmm. that lasted for many hours, hmm. wasting soap up, watching soap operas on TV. Hmm. Mode of life, making embroidery on duvets, making green and red bushes, bush, mm -hmm. <laughs> meat dumplings, shopping for a wardrobe. 
Everything should be measured by your purpose. If all the things like phone conversations, communications, help you to fulfill your purpose, then they are fine. It's fine because you are using it for purpose, right? It's just like when we are eating. When I'm eating, I'm either reading at the same time or doing something constructive. Even if I'm going to the restroom, I always go with my... No, somebody will say, I always go with my computer or with my something. Then you are doing everything. That's the same thing with vacation. The same thing. So everything you are doing, you are combining it with something. We are cooking, but you are also learning. Then, so that is the best way to avoid some of these regrets. They are constructive vacations and communications. So if you are con if you are communicating and you are adding value to people or you are getting value to yourself, then it's okay. Okay. All these things can be combined with the things that help grow and improve yourself spiritually. You see. For example, you can listen to an instructional audio while you are doing daily house chores. Sure. Mm -hmm. What is life? Sense. What, what is, is the it? sense of the, life? It's supposed to be the essence of life. Mm -hmm. What is the essence of life? According to the opinion in the world. A person found his place in life if he or she has the following wealth, fame, power, good family, children, houses or flats, country house, real estate, entertainment, resorts or traveling, good appearance. Is that true? Yeah. This is what I ask my people. These are the things they told me. That is for the world. And you see, at the end of the day, they had nothing of eternal value here. Overt and secret desires of the person. Which things from this list attract you? Which things would you like to have, no matter who you are? Whether you are a believer or an unbeliever, people sometimes spend all their life to get all these things. You see the girl? She looks okay, but those are the things in her head. She's dreaming about these things. And most of us are like that. So what? because we are, these are the things you are dreaming of, so your whole effort and energy is driving you to get these things. Yep. So you are exchanging your life for these things. Instead of for purpose. Nothing out of the mentioned things lead to eternity. Nothing. More often, it, this list is from hell. Mm. People are cruelly deceived Whew. and they make a lot of effort and spend a lot of energy trying to reach this, the things about which almost every person in the world dreams. No problem. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 20 do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth the opposite jesus is saying the very opposite of those things do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moat nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. So people live as if God, Jesus never said this thing. People just live for this, all these things as if Jesus never said it. But you know, Jesus is the truth. And he has come to show us the truth. Either you like it, you take it. If you don't like it, don't take it. But you will read the reward in hell. Destiny of every person. Our life will end physically in the cemetery, spiritually in eternity. Either heaven or hell. So you choose. Either you believe what Jesus said to live for him. And that's why I have to I came up with that program yesterday. All these seven uh, seven all these days. That's why I came up with the, uh, the idea of this HMT. Get your life back from all this vanity. and bury your life in your purpose. How to live to inherit eternal life? 
Number one, to honor our Creator. And the best way to honor God is to fulfill the purpose for which He sent you here. Mm -hmm. Live for what He sent you here for. Living on the earth, we have to consider the time when we honor our Creator. The priority and number one. That, that should be our priority. That should be our number one purpose. You know, we to honor Him, you honor Him best when you fulfill the reason why He sent you here. Not when you go to church and sing praise and worship, but when you <laughs> fulfill His purpose. Well, right? Number two, obey God's commandments. To inherit eternity, we have to obey His commandments. Let thy will be done here on earth. I'm not talking about Ten Commandments here. I'm talking about His will. We are here to do His will. Yeah. To inherit eternity, we have to obey His commandments. That, that is why we should dedicate our best time to the deep learning of these commandments and live according to them. That's why we do solitude. Find out what he wants you to do. Find out how to best please him. That's what it's about. Number three, build relationship with Jesus. Personal relationship with God. Developing friendly relationships with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. This is the thing that gives eternity to people. Number four, a heart free for God. The heart will lead the person Set to your heart free from all this lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, and this greed to take that, to get that, to get... No, rather give. Live your life to give. To give life. The heart will lead the person to heaven. The heart that is free for God doesn't cling to anything. Don't be attached to anything. Be attached to God only. The parable about the rich young man. 20, 20. The young that's, man. Sorry, that's that's verse, was, 20, yeah. verse 20 of Matthew chapter 9, 16 to 26. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Verse 21. Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Is and it, come, that, follow me. Is that was his calling. That's why God gave him all the wealth. So that he could use it for eternal purpose for all that people, but he didn't get it. The because heart, the purpose of wealth is to use to lift up others. The heart of the person should belong only to God. Hmm. Any person's heart, your, your, your attachment, it must be your only true attachment. What holds our hearts? It is not that you should not have property, but your heart should not, should not be belong to it. We can possess as many things as we want. The main thing is that they should not possess us. The Jesus phrase, to sell what you have, doesn't mean only, to, not only a flat or a car. It means everything that the person has. The heart of the person has to be free. So sell doesn't mean go physically sell, but set your heart free from them mm -hmm. so that you are not attached to them. The heart of a person should be free that from... That means including children, wife, husband. Should be free from husband, wife, children. The heart of a person should only belong to God. Your heart should belong only to God. Luke chapter 14 and verse 26. If anyone comes to me, and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, what he's talking about hate there doesn't mean to physically go and hate. It just means that, you know, you must not be attached to them. Yeah, you must, not, you must be ready to work out if necessary. You must be attached only to him. Prioritization. People can really love and value those who are close to them only when they start to love God. God has to take first place in our lives. So he's talking about priority. Love your parents, love your parents, love your family, but you, God must be the priority, the first place. Number five, serve God and people. To come to eternity, one should serve God and people. Serving God is impossible without serving people. The parable about the talents in Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. A master gave talents to his slaves. Two served with the talents and one did not. 
Those who served with their talent pleased their master. The one who hid his talent was instructed to be thrown into outer darkness. Number six, good actions. Very often, people want to convince themselves that good works are not important. Yes, yes, good works are not important without faith in Jesus, but faith without works is dead. Good works are important in any case. Especially when you are in Christ, when you are already saved, yeah. We have to add works to our faith. This is why we create social organizations, start social projects and movements. Jesus said that good works are important. The parable about talents, Matthew 25, 14 to 30. In the end times, people will be divided into two categories. Those who saw Jesus hungry and didn't give, and didn't give him food. Who saw him thirsty and didn't give him a drink. He was a stranger, but they didn't invite him. And when he was without clothes, they didn't give him clothes. Who saw him in prison and didn't come to visit him? Those will stand on the left as goats. On the right, there will be those who gave him food, drink, clothes, shelter, and visited him. Those will stand on the right as sheep. Number seven, love people and serve them. To inherit eternal life, we have to love people and serve them. There is no love to God without love to people. The parable of the Good Samaritan, Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. What is the most important commandment? You should love your neighbor. And who is your neighbor? The one who was taught to be an unbeliever, but who didn't go past the one who was in need. He will inherit eternal life. Heavens respect the one who can see the need of others and doesn't go past. This is what Christians should be like. But Levite and priests that went to church to pray and didn't notice people near them will go to hell. We have two lists, values of the world and eternity. Values of the world, number one, wealth, two, fame, three, power, four, good family to get married successfully, five, children, six, flat or houses, seven, country house, real estate, eight, entertainment, 9. Results, traveling, 10. Appearance, while eternity, what heavens encourage, encourage us to value. In Matthew 6, 19 to 20, 1. To honor our Creator, to honor your Creator, 2. To obey His commandments, 3. To build friendly relations with Christ, 4. To have a heart free for Him and put Him first, 5. To serve God and people, 6. Good works, and seven, love to people. What do we spend our life on? What do we spend most of our time on? The things from the first list or the things from the second list? 90% of time is spent on things on the first list. Sad. It's a waste. That's why we don't know where our lives are gone to. Summary. Jesus states that eternity is the most important then why do we waste the life given to us on the temporal and earthly things? We have to, number one, repent and humble ourselves before God so that He renews our Christian life. Two, change our priorities to start looking sober at this world, the way God looks at it. Three, to dedicate ourselves to God again. Four, to make God's will our passion and strong desire. Five, to stop living according to the standard of this world, living for yourself. Six, to get out of the system of this world. Seven, change your own life from this day. Maybe you want to take the photograph of that, those instructions, they might help you. Question. No, no, questions, you we'll, we'll deal with that later. Well, that's it, guys. You know, so the, the topic is your day, a picture of your life. Anyway, that's it, just...
So, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We have a, you have a long day in front of you. I have a long day. So, I think nothing to add. Unless any one of you wants to add something. I think it's sober, it's clear. And uh, go get your coffee. Go get your lunch. Ah, maybe, yeah, I, told, I said there's uh, maybe, yeah, yeah, I want to they want to hear from you. How I spend my day, my time. Yeah. So that you had, what? No, no, no. So I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Anu to take over from here. And, uh, you know, it's a very serious topic. Please go and share the message, everybody. Share, share, share. Share the message with your friends and family members. And go get the books. The books are Olorunwa, Why Nations Die, and the latest book that we just released, uh, which is now a bestseller already, Kingdom First, Church Second. So I will see you again tonight. Peace. All right. Can we thank Dr. Sonny for being here? Thank you so much. Yes, All right. Great. Well, uh, Dr. Sunday wants me to, to say or to share about how he spends his hours and how he lives. Um, it's a very challenging thing to live close to Dr. Sunday because, I mean, you are, you're pushed, you're challenged to take into account every minute of your time, every hour of your day. Uh, basically, I can't say in to the fullest of um to go on this um schedule but to the best of my knowledge i will try to explain how he lives his his time and what he does so basically um i i don't know the time that Dr. Sunday sleeps or wake up what i know is that um which he has said that i think he sleeps on an average four to five hours in a day uh and because and that is because you know working with him you maybe we have a daily broadcast and everything but you can get a message from dr sunday on skype maybe 3 a.m and I, this this has to be done ah so maybe you just mistakenly wake up and then you see your skype that a message came in by three and uh, maybe you had a meeting with him up till maybe 12 or 1 and then by seven o'clock you see sunday Adela, sunday Adela just sharing the post and you know this is him sharing the post ah so you are thinking, when does he sleep? When does he, how does he do it? Well, basically, I know he wakes up quite early. And um, I think the first two hours of his day or three hours is just with God, just him and God having that personal time. And basically, nobody sees Dr. Sunday only on exceptional cases up until 12. So from morning to 12, it is just him, self-education, his time, that's it. So from 12 then if he has any appointment, any meeting with anybody, then that can come after that. Um, so most of you know that Dr. Sunday, every day he has three hours minimum for self-education. And he does that till now. Three hours of self-education. He just, he's just educating himself. Um, apart from that, he devotes close to uh, maybe six, maybe let's say five to six hours in a day because he has two hours, um, two shows in a day, two live programs. And those two shows take, to, take like four, five, six hours some, day, some days. So that is already gone from that day. <laughs> yeah, sometimes three hours per hour, sometimes three hours per program, sometimes four hours like that, just four. So just, just calculating those hours is like every day is gone. One of the things that Dr. Sunday also does, and he, he has said it today, when he's having um, his breakfast or when he's eating, he's listening to something, he's watching something. Um, even if you guys have noticed, even during maybe one of my shows with Dr. Sunday, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking, maybe I'm exposing him here. During some of our shows with, with Dr. Sunday, I'm having a show with him and he's with his iPad. He's, I don't know what he's doing, either he's reading, either he's, he's doing something, he's just, it's like, Time, it's just like time with him is no time can go by so it's with his ipad in another secret that maybe many of you know is that some of, we i did books with dr sunday and then we go through the books with him and 
I remember an, an encounter with um, Dr. Sunday and a, vis a guest that came. So we were in the room reading, and I was reading the book for Dr. Sunday. And if you hear me read the book for Dr. Sunday, I ask my mom, I can conf conf confirm that I, I read with, with high speed, like high, very high speed. And I read sometimes that I, I read and I make mistakes. But even what is even amazing about Dr. Sunday is the fact that Oftentimes he sleeps, he's sleeping and he's snoring when he's sleeping there. So he's sleeping, he's snoring, I'm reading. So I had, the, there was a guest that came one day and he was trying to tap me and was saying, I know, stop reading, pastor is sleeping. I told, the, I, told, I told the guest, no, he's not sleeping, trust me. So he did not believe me, so I continued. So he was just looking at me, that, why are you reading to support that he's sleeping? Are you not wasting your time? Okay, so I kept on reading. And I made a mistake myself, but I did not even notice I made a mistake. I was just reading. The doctor says, just go back. <laughs> <laughs> then from his sleep, he just woke up. I just said, uh, go back to uh, maybe like three paragraphs before now and correct these things. Ah! And then the guy there was like, <laughs> then, I, then I was laughing. I said, I told you, he's not sleeping. His mind is working. Ah! So, and he has trained himself so high. And because he was explaining to me one time, because I asked him that, how is it that you can do all of these things like that? And he explained to me what, how he trained himself. Because he said, let's say attention span is 100%, all right? Most people, for them to listen to you, they need to give you 100% attention. Meaning every other thing is dead. But the way he has trained himself is that all of those usual mundane things of life like listening having conversation all of those stuffs he can do all of them with maybe 10 percent of his attention so what would take an average person maybe 100 percent to get all you're saying it would take him like 10 percent so he has 90 percent attention left so what will he be doing with that 90 percent it's like he's wasting it so while he gives you 10% of his attention to get all what you're saying and you wouldn't miss out in a word. He can get, tell you back to back. He has 90% attention left. So that's what he uses to do all that things. Just maximizing his time and everything. Well, I don't know what I can say. I mean, I want to give to Mayowa to say more because we are here and it's quite overwhelming. Mayowa, over to you. Yes. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, okay, uh, some of the things that uh, Dr. Anu have missed out. Um, I'm going to start first by just saying that everything about Dr. Sunday, he created himself. He didn't leave anything to chance. He didn't leave it to culture. He didn't leave it to traditions. He didn't leave it to gender. He didn't leave it to anything that has been defined for him by the world. He sat down consciously and decided, what do I want to do with my life? How do I want to spend my life? How do I want to spend my days? Those, those are the things that I observed about him. He doesn't go by what is out there or what anybody has said at all. He listens to everybody and he listens to everything that is necessary. Okay. And then he deduced what he wants to do and the reason why he wants to do that are those things aligned with the person that he wants to be because he's already defined who he wants to be. Mm -hmm. So he goes and analyze that himself and make a decision on how to attain those things, how to achieve those things. He doesn't say, he, he, it's not somebody that says, okay, you know, if God strengthens me to do something. No, 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 no. It's more like, okay, God is God knows that I really want to do this. I want to do this. But the proof is I'm going to go and research that area. So if there's something that Dr. Sonny doesn't know or he needs to know to make up his own plan and his, uh, uh, his desire or his goals, he would go and study those things. And I mean, he doesn't leave it to chance. He doesn't leave it to, oh, God will lay hands on me or the anointing of God will come to me. He will go and study it and every resources he could find on that subject or in that area. He's, he will be very abdomen. He's very, very on to the, I need to study. I need to develop myself. Most of what he knows, he developed himself. That is why her, um, the book, Olorin Why, is really important. And even if you watch some of Dr. Sunday's earlier videos um, or teachings, he told, you, he told us all how he started from a very poor background, very poor home. It's not privileged in anything. It's not as though he was brought up a, geni a genius. He created himself. He developed to be what he is now. 
It's not by God coming and touching his tongue or anointing him like some of the geos or pastors say. So get that out of your mind. Uh, because some of us, what we do is say, oh, Dr. Sunday has got special anointing or uh, Dr. Sunday has got a, is, is a, um, you know, it's got such special strength. No, he built up to those things. He developed those things. He created those things to happen. So whatever you want, whatever you want to achieve, you have to create, you have to develop it yourself. Not wait for Holy Spirit to touch you or anointing to touch you or somebody to use, um, you know, because Christians, we're very fond of this, to go and tap into somebody's anointing. You're lying to yourself. You're not tapping to anybody's anointing. That person who, whatever they have, they worked hard at it. You know, they develop themselves, they grew to have it. So you, ha we all have to do that as well if we want to attain those things. And that's why this um, HMT is very important. Another thing I want to share with Dr. Sunday is in terms of the structure, I know uh, Pastor, uh, Dr. Anu said uh, uh, Pastor Sunday starts at 12, but Dr. Anu is in school most of the time uh, around that time. So it's not actually 12. Even when Dr. Sunday is uh, in solitude, Dr. Sunday's day starts quite early. Maybe, I don't know how long he sleeps because we all discussed this. I wake up intermittently over the night and um, when I, ch I will always check my phone or iPad or something for some reason it's my own habit it's not it's not good but um it's just something that i do so they say that it's not good but i do that anyway so and you will see that sunday is on working or taking some sort of action you can see um from our, our, our from our system we can see that he is on is awake when maybe in the, if i wake up like four or five times there might be 30 minutes of that time where he is not on you can't see him on so he's still active so i don't really know how long it sleeps i'm I'm guessing between maybe because sometimes you even send emails or send messages late i will talk about that as well quickly um and maybe i don't know maybe three to four hours max that he sleeps in a day and in the mornings i know he's also active in the morning when we we all don't see him because some um sometimes when you come here as early to the vip uh, that's the working area as early as nine in the morning or 10 is recording so he has the media team they are already would have contact whoever he needs he might not need more than one or two people and he will record until my program later on in the afternoon which is three three so he would record several sequence of the things that he wants to teach he wants to get out of him for other people to have even when he's not around or he doesn't have the time to do the life programs so there are a host of I don't know how many hundreds uh, of teachings that Dr. Sunday has already done and packaged is already recorded on different areas and different topics. So he does that even in solitude. When he's in solitude, I try to give time and not be around. And many people also will not be around, but he will contact the people that he needs to come and um, help him with um, recording. And they will record for maybe a minimum between three to five hours in that morning, every single day for the period that he's in solitude. Um, and if, if it's not in the house, it would be a court. If it's not a, a court, maybe he went for a walk and that's only in the summer and the rest of the time he's doing something. Another thing I want to mention is, you know, living in the West, I growing up in England, you know, taking devices and stuff to toilets, it's like you're not hygienic. You know, they just try and make you feel like, you know, it's almost like I'm conditioned. So there's a long time ago when Dr. Sunday started saying, telling us that um, he didn't even need to tell us. I noticed as well. He would take his iPad, his red iPad, and you go to toilet with it. Oh, I want to go to toilet. We'll take it. I'm thinking, Ugh, you know, but I'm only fooling myself. You know, he goes to the toilet. Um, he, when he wants to use, you know, do the activities in the toilet, he will put it down in a clean area. And when he's, it's not like he's putting him in sand in the toilet. Let's think about it logically, because I'm sure that some of you as well, you're thinking the same thing. Even taking a phone, you can't proudly say you took a phone to the toilet, but he takes iPad. He doesn't have a phone and he's reading or he's listening to some sort of teaching or video or, you know, something is, is, is something about educating himself. He knows everything about the, what's happening in the news. He knows what is happening in politics. He knows what is happening, um, everything that is necessary, not X factor or, you know, anything that is irrelevant like that. No, no, you know, medical advances. He knows everything because he's spending his time to develop himself. So let me go back to this toilet idea, you know, taking your devices there. You know, some do take their phone to just scroll on Instagram. I do that sometimes, um, but he does it consciously. So maybe he's listening to something and he doesn't 
doesn't want to stop listening because he's going to be in the toilet. So he takes it, he put it down, um, and then obviously listen. Think about it. You're not putting your hand in the toilet bowl, or actually when you finish, you're not going to wash your hands. You wash your hands, you finish, and you take your device. So don't shy away from those things because we've been conditioned in so many ways that we're not aware of it. So um, I, I, I think that it's important that we restructure our life, we create our life the way that we want. You know, there's a lot of dogmas, a lot of things that we have been following for many years due to many things, many factors, our environment, what those people that don't know better, what they taught us, and we didn't bother to question them. You have to really start questioning everything and deciding exactly what you want to do with your time, what you want to do with your life, how you want your life to be, you know, the activities that you want to do or engage in you know a lot of people especially if you're in the same environment they would object to it but you have to just be understanding that they don't know better rather than you know be angry at them because that's one of the things that we tend to do is like we don't want to fight the battle so battles so we continue with what we are used to but you know you have to fight the battle if you unless you leave that environment and go somewhere else and start again which most of us cannot do so if you're in the same environment you need to they you need to fight the battle you need to tell people you don't want to do things in this way anymore this is how you want to do it and show them by examples not just by talking and saying that you want to do something but actually by doing those things everything that you see dr sunday talks about is the things that he does daily for himself and um i don't want to take too much okay we've got a little bit of time um the other thing i just want to mention is that um the thing about routine i again i was i was brought up in the west where you know if you're if you're a routine person people say that you're boring we spoke about it yesterday so the routine activities that you need to do you must is a must you know um a lot of people also don't like to write down lists because you'll find that you can't achieve what you wrote down so it discourages you but it shouldn't be discouraging you it should actually be empowering you i'm talking for myself when i write down a list and i see that okay i wrote down five things or ten things and i was only able to achieve one or two i don't want to look at my failure but you face up to it you fail that day doesn't mean you will fail every day so continue to do it until you master it don't give up that's you know you have to be resilient um another thing okay um being uh again uh, being in the west in the environment in england is emails sending messages sending information late um dr anu mentioned that the sunday can send you things anytime i was i'm a project manager and i was uh, again taught that you know i should send messages at sociable hours and others okay that is also conditioning you know so when you remember something or you want to do certain things you don't do it you think okay it's, it's late at night but that's when it might be for you that that's when your mind is working well it's also about self-discovery if you go by what the world says that you should do and how you should do it that might not be your own way it might not work for you so you have to find out ways that work for you and if you're around people that okay they or they are more interested in the way that is being uh, tailored for them is the way that is structured for them by the world or the society when you want to write something like an email you want to send it down in the morning or very late at night or when you wake up very late and you're waiting to um a sociable hours you can write that email and put it in the um in the safe i'm just using it as an example emails you can still write the email and put it and not send but when you wake up on the social social uh sociable hours you can then send it then but what most of us might do is like okay since i can't send it now i will write it and send it at the same time and then you don't ever get to do it anything dr sunday remembers to do finally i'm going to stop here anything that he wants to do he want it comes to his mind consciously he would do it immediately he would take the action immediately he doesn't leave it to okay maybe later maybe i'll do it you know i see him so many times he could be talking and that's why you see him as well on his ipad and we might be talking about something and immediately we start to take the action and and do it you, you know even especially when people are talking uh during the life program ideas is coming ideas are coming to his mind and immediately he's writing down something if he's not writing down you would hear him say to, uh, say it out loud like oh we should um write a book about this so even if he's sitting there saying you should write a book about this he would go and um he would uh later on watch the video and nobody pays attention or nobody writes to him 
Uh, sometimes what I do is I write to him what he says, but I don't even do that often. I'm not even that persistent because he's more on point than I am. So when uh, he goes, when the program finishes, Doc Sunday will go back and watch that program and he will note down the things that he, even he said and he has forgotten. You know, it will take his time to do everything. If I saw him and said, oh, Doc Sunday, did you see what happened in, this pro in my program today? I said, no, I didn't watch it. I'll watch it later. He would go and watch it. Even I don't watch my own program. You know, he would watch it and then said, oh, okay, oh, I saw this. And, you know, if there's no need for discussion, no discussion around it. But he's very conscious of everything that he does. He designed his life. He created himself to be who he is now. Remember, if you if you read along while and you know his um, history and background, don't let anybody lie to you. You will never allow anybody to lie to you to say that they're geniuses or they've got anointing that you don't have. We all have anointing. We're all geniuses, but you have to create to be those things. You have to create yourself to be those things. Okay, I hope I haven't said too much. Um, so, guys, thank you very much for your time. Yes, Dr. Anu is giving me permission to close. I appreciate you all for joining. Thank you very much. We'll be back today uh, again uh, for the second session. That will be at, uh, I think that will be at 5, 5 today. Um, the activity is going on throughout the day that we will not um, uh, put on live, but we will be back at 5 live on Facebook and YouTube so you can join us. That's 5 p.m. Ukraine time. That's 3 p.m. UK time. And please check your local time wherever you are. I appreciate everyone that joined. Please share this. Uh, this is HMT Day 6. Okay, they had a bonus day. HMT is usually five days. So it's day six of HMT, um, February 2019. How to structure, plan, and achieve your life goal for the next 25 years. I hope you've enjoyed this HMT so far. You have all the time in the world to go back and revisit or review um, the teachings online. They are available on YouTube. Dr. Sunday Adelaja uh, on YouTube and on Facebook also the videos are available Dr. Sunday Adelaja um, if you want to join us for the next HMT that would be in April 2019 so in just two months um, for those of you that are watching us that you are in Africa uh, Asia or countries where you will need visa to come here in Ukraine please start to take action immediately the registration form are already available go to Sunday Adelaja blog com slash HMT. I'll repeat, sundayadelajablog.com slash HMT. You see the registration form. It's not long at all. We just want to know your personal details and you make choice, uh, know your choice on accommodation. So, and also if you need visa and you would need an invitation letter of sorts. So please go ahead and fill that form now and start making your plans. Um, if you are in America or in Europe and you need visa again, you also need to take um, action as soon as possible. Um, the visa process to Ukraine is very stringent. So please don't undermine it and think, okay, it's not going to be a big deal. They are stringent and we have the um, uh, consulate uh, link, Ukrainian consulate link, you can copy that link as well or Google just Ukrainian consulate and look at what their requirements are so that you will not be disappointed uh, with your plans. So please, again, uh, we are in a very good um, HMT where it's about plan and structure in our lives. So everything that we do from now, we have to plan and structure um, it from A to Z. Um, finally, again, I'm just going to remind you of the date. April HMT is from the 4th onto the no, actually it's from the 8th to the 12th. The reason the 4th is, is the 25th anniversary. So that's the silver anniversary of Embassy of God's Church, the Embassy of God or God Embassy um, Church. And um, we would like you to come over as well and celebrate with us. So if you want to do that, that's from the 4th. That's Thursday to the 7th. That's Sunday. And then HMT starts immediately from the 8th to the 12th of April. So we want you also to join us in that. If you want to, you can also um, complete the same form or you can go to sundayadelajablog.com slash visit. So sundayadelaja.com, sundayadelajablog.com 
slash visit that is for just um the anniversary if you just want to come for the anniversary and no hmt required but if you want to come for anniversary and hmt please stick to the form with the hmt you can also um, select when you're going to arrive so that would be sunday adelajablog.com slash hmt with that form you can come for both the anniversary and hmt hmt being the predominant thing that you're coming for um during if you if you use that form instead of the other form i appreciate you all again uh please check out these videos again and again and um select um you know write notes of the lessons that you've learned and change your life you know everything that you've learned will be useless if you don't take the actions that are needed uh to make it reality to to put life into it and to transform you i appreciate you all for watching i will see you again thank you everybody thank you we'll see you at 5 p.m ukraine time and that's 3 p.m uk time Thank you for joining. Bye.